Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Detroit is definitely in the building via your headphones, stereo speakers. I'm your man, the African Caesar. And of course, this is the Sneaker Box Morning Show on Woodward Sports Network. I'm joined here by my co host, the contrarian. He always has to be the one. You know what they say, four out of, well, one out of ten. He's that one out of ten that has to go against the other nine. That's me. Yes. What's up, people? And then we also have Mr. Bot Topic himself, the hype beast of the show, Dunks. We're repping for Brett Hall today. Oh, God. Yeah, if anybody's seen our, show, our video on Instagram, uh, or we, we did the sneaker review reviews. Yeah, that was, uh, you were pretty animated. I thought that was great. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, yeah. It was Brad Hall. He tears himself apart. Yeah. Happy Detroit Day to everybody. Oh, else. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got the nerve to. Yeah, you know what's funny? So last Are you week. from New Orleans now? <laughs> Shout out to Mitchell and Ness, by the way. Um, no, so. What happened, so last week was our first show, and so everybody got mad at me for not wearing Detroit apparel. And I was like, well, that's kind of cliche. Like, I don't want to wear just Detroit stuff. Like, it should be known we're from Detroit. Like, the the name of the network is Woodward Sports. You know, like. Well, not everybody knows where Woodward is in Detroit. At. Like, anybody who listened to the show know we're from Detroit. They know this network is from Detroit. So, point being, they I just might, thought it was, they I just thought it was too much. They huh? might be in, like, butt fuck Maryland. Well, it could be. But I just I'm, thought it was I'm too much. I'm down to check that spot out. That's probably where uh, all the Under Armour parties are at. And I think that's going to be the first sneaker count of the year. Hey. Look, so the point is, uh, I didn't want to be Mr. Homer. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to put on. And plus, I was trying to wear my University Blue Ones. So I put on whatever I felt like. Matt, with that, which happened to be the Kobe. From Nike just on time for the first episode. Exactly. So I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to put on this Kobe uh, throwback to kind of go with it. And so this week, I, I sort of got... All week, I was like, all right, I got to wear Detroit something, Detroit something. And then I'm going through my closet. <laughs> and and I'm, like, no, going I'm like, I'm going with this. So, oh, you know, shout out to Mitchell and us, like I said, you know. Shout yeah. out to the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, it's a dope jersey, you know. And I just got the hat yesterday. Wait, whose jersey is that, though? That's who's, Divine Intervention. Who's number 37 for the Saints? Gleason. Oh, the Sam Gleason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, shout out to Sam Gleason. Yeah. yeah. So. I got nothing negative to say. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so we got a lot of topics we want to discuss. Um, there's definitely some added uh, news from last time we talked about Ann Herbert and her son. So there's some definitely some added news about that. Uh, David Beckham, he is making a documentary about the Adidas Puma robbery, which I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised that has not like been that. talked about enough. I like that. You know, that's probably one of the more... Uh, salacious stories, I guess, in sneaker history. Like, and it, that's... The, any ton of a documentary is mostly Jordan One, Impact of Air Jordans, Impact of Jordan. Like it's it's all Jordan and Nike, re- Nike related, and I, I I'm glad that somebody is taking a different approach mm-hmm. other than the Impact of Air Jordans. Do you know who David Beckham is, Dunks? Yeah, a soccer player. Oh, okay. Of course, he's white. I, I got um, nervous. Thank God. It was like <laughs> yeah, a sports show now. That's one out of one that yeah, he knows. He knows. Yeah, of course. I'm not surprised <laughs> by that. I yeah. Um, and then he Foot Locker. Spice Girl. Say what? Didn't he marry a Spice Girl? I think he did. Man. That's why I know him. He's relevant. Uh, yeah, Pops. Is he re- okay, wait a minute. Are yeah. you saying he's relevant because he married a Spice Girl? To me. That's why I know who he is. <laughs> I mean, she was she was kind of hot in terms of Spice Girls. Honestly, I couldn't. I could not tell you. She was the one with the dark hair. I, hey, honestly, maybe we you, could edit that part out. <laughs> how many How many of them are there? Now, see, that, five. I don't know. Dunks? I said five. Okay, so you could put all five Sparty, of them. Spice, and the ginger, and the other one. See, I, I don't know that. <laughs> that. That doesn't even name all of them. The Ginger and the other one. No, no, no. Her name's Ginger. I think she's in What about the other one? Uh, if anyone's watching live and can comment, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Somebody please let us know. Okay. So, sorry, Spice Girls. So with that, on that note, <laughs> you could put all five, of, all five of them in front of me. I could not tell you. I couldn't even tell you if they was in the group or not. Well, everybody knows who Scary Spice is. The one black one? Yeah, yes, wait, okay. exactly. Okay. I was going to say, like, come on See now. how my mind just went there, though? Like, it's just, and her sporty, name is Scary. Sporty was the one that used to wear track pants all the time. I'm right? about to let go for making this about Spice Girls. Well, you right? started it, so yeah. Yeah, it's on you. Well, anyway. And then uh, Foot Locker names Melody Asani as the woman's creative director. Interesting. I mean, it's a... Uh... I got some thoughts about that. I think they're just no, I'm happy the for her. I don't want to sound like I'm hating. Like I don't want to sound like uh, there's nothing wrong with her or her abilities. They're just riding the wave of her popularity right now. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It just seems that's what too, it feels like. It feels ingenuous, yeah, disingenuous. And so I'm just kind of like, 
I mean, we get more into it as we break into the story. But me personally, I would like. Um, I don't know. I just feel like people. There are more. It just seems like opportunities go to the same handful of people, and it doesn't seem like anybody takes the time to uh, grow new talent. Well, that's why, like what Dunk said, it felt like they just her wave is hot right now still. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, she has the resume, you know. Like, I mean, that that matters, huh? Why not Vashti? I mean, hasn't she had a little bit more skin in the game? Like, I don't know. You gotta ask. You gotta ask Full Locker. Well, if it doesn't, I mean. If it doesn't work out, I'm sure Adidas, Adidas will try and swoop in. <laughs> Gino, if we know anything, we know about the decision making process of Full Locker. So. <laughs> well, I think you know more about yeah, it personally. Yeah, so I'm not surprised. Shout out to them. Yeah. Right? So, anyway, uh, make sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at TSB underscore show. You can follow us on Instagram at the sneakerbox underscore show. And you can follow us on Facebook by looking up the sneakerbox uh, radio show page. Is that a Red Bull plug? Sponsored by Red Bull. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. like. Pouring in the Dunks and Jordans cup. Yeah, we're trying to get Red Bull. What's up? Uh, our voice, I mean, our call-in hotline isn't up just yet, but uh, you can call us and leave us a voicemail on our voicemail hotline at 248-677-1803. Um, do we have any voicemails? No, not yet. Well, oh. we do. We do, but I'm going to save that for next week. Oh, okay. I got a bunch of... Um, you know, a bunch of well wishes and everybody's happy for us. A bunch us of and... congratulations. Oh, yeah. people not hating? That's no. what I want to hate. Not, at least not to our face. I'm having the That's interns, why I figured they do the voicemails. I'm having the interns filter out all negativity towards me. I'm not I'm not dealing with it. You mean you have the interns filtering all negativity towards you? This is why we have no positive confluence to share yet. Was it from Next mayor week. at gmail.com? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to mayor. Yeah, shout out to mayor. Um, but anyway, if you want to leave us uh, a voicemail, you want to comment or uh, ask us any sneaker-related comments or questions, or you want to respond to something we said on the show, make sure to call us on our voicemail hotline at 248-677-1803, and we'll play it on a, a future episode. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to take some time out to catch up on some of the voicemails that we received in the last couple of weeks. Um, but moving on... Uh, Let's jump right into it. Let's get into our five five sneaker releases from the previous week. And we're going to start with number five. We have the, and I'm mad about this too. We're going to get right into this. Uh, the Nike popcorn pack. Are we going to get the right picture? Well, why are you mad about it? That's I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm mad about it. Which one are you mad about? The pack or specifically the Air Force Ones? No, I'm mad. About, okay, so I'm not mad about the pack. The pack was actually pretty clean. I yeah, mean, it, simplistic if, was pretty clean. And if anybody can help your boy out with getting that Air Force One, please let me know. Because yeah. I am definitely look. I need it. I got to have it. No, I thought she was dope. I mean, they could have probably did a little bit more with it. I do like the lace jewelry or the uh, the jewelry that came with the uh, with the shoes, both the Blazer and Air Force One Low. Here's my problem, though. Yeah, I want to hear this. I'm, I'm listening in. No, and I'm, it's nothing to do with nah, the shoe at all. Butter. It has nothing to do with the shoe at all. The, my problem with the, the whole release of that shoe is that seeing the resale prices afterwards, you would think I wouldn't be, at this point, you would think I would not be surprised at crazy resale prices. I knew these were going to sell pretty decent, if not sell out within a day. I didn't think people was going to try to sell these for three, four $400. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't see that. What sizes? In a range of sizes. Because I kept checking the size. Uh, 10 and 10 and a half for myself. The yeah. highest I saw was 180. No, like initially, okay, what time of the day though did you go look? Because that matters. Well, I went and, check I went and checked the next day. Check this out so. though. If you're actually looking to buy the first 48 hours, it's going to be like everyone who missed it is going gonna, is gonna to rush to go buy it. But once the resellers get them in hand, it's going to be a rush who can undercut. So wait a week instead of that first 48 hours, and you'll get a better price. My man. See, that's what that's why we have him on the show. The first, well, I mean, the first right 48 there. hours, unless it's like a shoe that caught you off guard, like the Taupe 4s, like you didn't expect it to skyrocket, for the most part, wait till they have them in hand. So, uh, dunks, you good for something. Dunks. Oh you good for God. something. Hey. Shout out to Dunks. Slam. Dunk. There we go. Oh my god. Hey, that's our first slam dunk of the uh of the new show. We really oh need a god. bell. We do. Y'all are sad. We gotta get like a, a horn that goes <laughs> in the background and says, <laughs> terms, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll say it before we move on. In terms of this popcorn pack, I don't love it, but I like to see Blazers and Air Force Ones being relevant, especially at the same time. And oh, so you like so you like the Raygun pack? 
I think they overdid the ray gun thing in general. Yeah, they did because now you got an up tempo. No, yeah, that's coming out. <laughs> oh my god! I saw no, yeah, I saw the promo shoot for that. I, I like the popcorn pack. I when I no, first I saw Air it. Force One, I thought it was pretty dope. I do agree. I didn't think that mm -hmm. the. I knew that the uh, there will be some resale value just because it is a pack and it's. I mean, like I said, it's a it's a pretty dope colorway. You know, it's a, a nice concept. So yeah. Um, I'm look. I'm still looking to get it, you know, in my own possession. So, I mean, like I said, nobody's surprised that this shoe, uh, you know, did well. Because, like I said, it's a pretty clean shoe. Spring is coming up. I mean, even the blazer is typically. I don't really too much care. Well, that's for the thing too. Nike is like in love with the blazer. You know how they just focus on like one silhouette. At a time, sometimes. Yeah, last year it was. It seemed last year was what the Air Max ninety. Yeah, it felt like right now the Blazer is like their go-to right now. Yeah. So, and it looks like the Air Force One is pretty is like in the queue <laughs> to be. Yeah, they up, got so. a lot of uh... forces are, are being relevant again. Or like, there's a lot of news coming up. Or um, you know, even the Fukijamas from Entourage have been in the news recently. Head check from Instagram was, was um, auctioning off limited artwork from it, which is making it relevant. Tried to cop some of those Ethereum only, but were they real? The artwork has to be. Okay. Um, it must not be. The artwork has to be. Why does it has to be? Uh, I don't really know the guy, but head check on Instagram. It was involved with the whole Entourage Nike collaboration. Like he wrote it. There's even a book about it. So as long as it's wow. legitimately coming from him, then it yeah, should be. Yeah. Okay. Makes okay. sense. Well, number four, we have the Puma Clyde Mid, the Black Fives. Now, I love this shoe because this is um, one of the um, leftovers from the... Uh, you know, everybody was doing like a Black History Month themed collection. Not as crazy as it used to be because for the most part, a lot of these brands uh, don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> you, but you would expect them of, of all years this year to try and be all over trying to make no. a Black History Month themed no. shoe. No, I'm not. Dude, I, I would have expected it. No. This I, year. Man, look. Of any year. I... <laughs> This is, how feel, year. this is how I feel. Because after last year, everybody, you know, they went on social media. Yeah, Black Lives exactly. Matter. All this other stuff. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, the, this is why I didn't get overly excited. Because it's Man. real easy to tweet. It's real easy to make a headline. What's hard is following through. Right. Well, according to Nike, they've been following through. You know, they've yeah. up their minority uh, um minority hiring in corporate which i still have don't have my job in nike yet so yeah i mean full locker you know they don't still didn't get his job no, no. <laughs> complex just hit me up let me know i didn't get the job so that's I'm probably why you out. didn't get the job yeah. affirmative action at work exactly. um <laughs> finally <laughs> reparations right, that's, that is the universe balancing <laughs> hey, this itself. is god's plan i'm here for that is <laughs> all worked out guys complex like look, look, we too white we, hey, they're we gonna be sick white, when dude. they when they realize what we've done here oh man yeah, I, I have I have a feeling some sort of way this is going to be copied. So you know it's going to be copied. Usually, what's going to end up happening? You know it's going to be copied. Not yeah. to say that nobody else can do a sneaker podcast. I don't want to sound that arrogant, but you already know. Like whenever we do something, and then once we make it viable, that's when everybody else is like, "Oh, we're going to do that too." Which you know, that's that's that. What is that called? Uh, that's capitalism. So you're going to see sneaker but, high with European Caesar. Can you put that Puma back up real quick <laughs> for me? European Caesar. Shot the stick. <laughs> He's our uh, graphics guy, working hard. I forgot to send him the pictures. What's no, up? I sent him the pictures. So What's up, Stick? I'm about to tell him myself because I sent the pictures, but for whatever reason, it got stuck in the queue. So he is working feverishly looking at the shoes. And what I love about it, this is why it's so funny to me. It's not funny because he's working, but it's funny because I know he has no clue what half these shoes are. So he, he's looking at those shoes. And trying to pick apart which I mean, ones so which. far he's too so far. Two. Yeah, he's betting a thousand right yeah, now. He's, so. he's better than uh, he's better than Adam last week. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> that Adam. was a low bar to jump over. By the way, <laughs> shout out to Adam, shout out to Adam, and shout out to Guru. I forgot to mention Guru's. Um, he uh, he doesn't have COVID, but he was within the perimeters of somebody who had COVID, and so he was in orbit of somebody who had COVID. So might all got trapped in his beard. <laughs> so if he shaves it off, he should be good, right? Wouldn't it? So you saying that his beard absorbs uh, COVID like trees absorb? Uh, it might absorb all dioxide. viruses, huh? Like that could be his superpower. That could be. Yeah, his beard just absorbs everything. Man, knowledge well, and COVID. Hopefully not everything. Oh, yeah. 
Wow. On that note, uh, the Even next though. shoe, number three, <laughs> we have the Adidas Original Form 84 High Girls Are Awesome, which by the by, uh, which by the way they are, girls are always awesome. Now, those are pretty dope. Uh, I know, right? Shout out to, see, once again, people think I hate Adidas. I give Adidas credit when they do something dope. I don't like them. Of course you now you sound like Gino. Girls are awesome, but I don't like these shoes. Jesus Christ. I was say, so what's wrong? Okay, I want to know what your are, beef is are with the returning? shoes. returning? Yes. I'm going to start calling you Dunks and him Gino. You no, know, I have noticed I've gotten a little bit lighter. <laughs> All right. White Gino. It's like white vision. White Gino. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what is wrong with this shoe? It's a cool concept. I won't rock them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's no. It's nice to pay respect, but it could have been done better. No, no look, 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 look at the screen. Oh, it does say Gino. <laughs> Stick coming in clutch. If we could keep it like that. No, remember, oh. you'd be African Caesar, though. <laughs> European Caesar. Yeah, European You're Caesar. European Caesar, okay. It, it's nice to pay respect, but, like, I don't get, I don't really get the meaning of the shoe or, like, why. Why girls present, are awesome? Why, like, what's the colorway mean or, like, what's it representing? It just says girls are awesome on it. Like, what's. Maybe I just missed the story behind it. Maybe I just don't like that. It's called doing research. Can you put that but... shoe back up? Thank you. As like, far as the shoe, I don't know. Was Honestly, I wish I had the answers or... for you. Um, I don't know what the design. It's good timing with National Women's Day and all that. I just exactly. not feeling the sneaker personally. Or do you? But what about? Oh, hold on. Do you not like Adidas forms? I've skated a pair back in the day, but it's not like my favorite silhouette. Do you, so do you think that might more so be? Yes. Okay. So if it were it's a like superstar. An 80s vibe. Yeah, so if it were a superstar, like a shell toe yeah, type, yeah, I prefer shell toe. See, I, that's sure. why I figured it what it is. I mean, you got you got to be a fan of a form to Wait, love and appreciate. Who don't like the forms? forms? Dunks. Uh, okay, besides dunks, like a normal person, European Caesar. Yeah, okay, European Caesar. I hope that like sticks. And I, I really <laughs> hope it doesn't. Next episode, that's got to be because that's going. I feel like it's going to cause confusion. People are going to see us and like which one is which. Um, you guys are twins. You guys would be like the Dudley boys. Yeah, we'd be twins oh, just like Danny DeVito hey, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was. Boys at one point. Oh, so I could be Spike. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Wait, he was the midget. Hold up. Yeah, I don't and he got he, slammed hey, through all the tables. We can't say that word. Oh, he was the the smaller of the three. The little person? Wow. Can you say that? Oh, what's the pl- You know what? Real quick. This Here has nothing go. to do with sneakers. Cancel culture. <laughs> right, yo. Episode two. No. Already. The only group we haven't pissed off yet. We're coming for you. I don't know. Okay, listen. I do not. Are we getting to a point now where it's just getting ridiculous now? Everybody's offended by everything. Everybody needs to to chill the f out, relax. It's not that deep, you know. Like I don't know. Like my generation grew up on Eminem, South Park, and all types of wildness and Jerry Springer, and Beavis all of a sudden. Butthead. Yeah, now all of a sudden we Beavis just can't stand video. certain words. You Pepe had- Le Pew is getting canceled. Not that I'm a big Pepe Le Pew fan, but I it's like Pepe Le Pew. You had, I watched you him when had he came to fight up, like, back and offend people just to be on like the school bus. Now it's like it was like a way of life. Yeah, you know, like bullied or that's how you stand up for yourself. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I don't know when we became so sensitive, but I wish we would get a grip. Honestly, I wish we would go back to just uh, just I don't know, like it's not being as offended now. by every God. Because I don't know what to say anymore. And honestly, I'm not even about to try. Well, because what is that? Because it's funny you brought up Eminem is I, I heard something they about to cancel Eminem. Uh, yeah, they, yeah the, this <laughs> next generation has been trying to get rid of Eminem because of his lyrics, which is like when we came up, we knew his lyrics were offensive and we we knew like we got it. But it, that was, was his, still that good. was part of his stick. Yeah, that was that was him. Like certain people you can't cancel like Howard Hughes. I mean, Howard Hughes. Wow. The aviator. Howard Stern. That's what I'm like, why are you going to cancel yeah, him? Yeah, like, what am I thinking about? Howard Stern. Like, you can't, because that's their whole thing is being shocking, and they don't care about your feelings being hurt. So the more you protest. That's going. That's more fuel for the fire. Exactly. So, you know, that's whatever. So what made Rush Limbaugh who he was? Really? Uh, basically. We, we was. And then no, was, what I'm saying, though, is because of all of the negative things he would say, that was oh yeah, he field. had his audience. Yeah, he didn't care. Saying. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's saying. different. Cause he he you know he had his audience and he was just like, I don't care. You know, this group of people don't like me. I'm yeah, gonna say he it. pissed people off yeah. and it kept him going. Yeah. So yeah. Chill out, man. Chill out. Anyway, you listen to Rush Limbaugh. Uh, you seem like a black Republican. No, the the best Rush Limbaugh. Just because wow, Guru's not here. No, no but you you the best you, you Rush have Limbaugh black Republican is, uh, vibes though. No, what is that when um when Cameron and and Dame Dash were on there? Oh, yeah. you mad? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. great. <laughs> ah, you mad? But you do seem like you vote Republican. Though. Nah, not at all. Uh, number two, <laughs> number two, we have the undercover 
Nike Outbreak Pack. Um, dope, 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 dope shoe. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like the black. You know what? I like them now, both. Okay, so I already know people are gonna say. Didn't you hate them Yeezys from last week? Those don't look like the Yeezys. Yeah, they have some. No, the Yeezys are slightly reminiscent of those Yeezys. No, they, no, they, they have. Not, I, listen, I don't see it. They have some. So Nike just did a better job of execution. Okay. The Yeezys look more like a cloud. This looks more like someone just stepped in like volcanic rock as it was hardening. That's sweet. Why do I feel like My you put a lot of thought? Or the look. The look. Oh, damn. Your analogy was trash. Ooh. Why do I feel like you put a lot of thought into that analogy? He, he really did. It was yeah. on the spot, and it was probably the most clever thing I've ever said on the show. <laughs> so you do need a bill for that. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Slam. I know. Dunk. Yeah. I, oh, I like the black ones more than the than the white cream <laughs> ones, but god damn it. Between the two, if I had... Yeah, I'm not fucking shit. What's number one? No, I, I want you to finish that thought. I don't want him to finish the no, thought. No, go ahead. Finish that thought. He's definitely about to offend somebody. I, finish the I, thought. I, I think... It's an interesting silhouette, and it looks better in a darker colorway. I like them. So you like you like you like the black ones? Yes. Yeah. That's why we have you on the show. <laughs> um, but no, I it's too slam. early in the show for this. Slam. Slam. Keep up that shoe one more time. Go. I'm sorry. I like, like so, the shoe. I like, I like the shoe. I yeah. thought you know at first when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah. But then the more I saw them, I'm like, okay, they started to grow on me. I have a serious now, question. Colorway. Colorway matters because I'm not sure if they tried to get too crazy with it, it would still fly. Is this yeah, is this they, like they, an they actual lifestyle shoe, or is this more of like an actual hiking shoe? I feel like this is a first lifestyle. Collapse. You already know yeah, it's a lifestyle, it's lifestyle shoe. I don't I don't foresee seeing anybody working out in these. I I'll be surprised if I see somebody running around the streets jogging in these. Not to say they couldn't be. They probably were made for that. I'm just saying, usually collaborations are more of the lifestyle side. Right. right. Well, here's my only beef with this shoe. This was men's shoe, right? Yes. This would have been dope as you a would, I'm telling you, I was going to say, you can't tell yeah. with the picture. I was going to say, this would have been dope <laughs> as a women's only release because I think a shoe like that is only going to look good as a smaller shoe. Yes. Like, a si your size in that shoe probably looks scary But I make everything look good. I, don't, nah. don't bring me into this. No. Nah, it probably looked like an actual volcano. No. Nah. Your size. Well, you said it looked like volcanic rock, so. I, I feel like there's a mother joke in this. Somewhere I can use. I can play off of that, but I'm not. This is... Children's show watching us right My now. My mom so. might be watching, so you know you might want to chill out. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> wow, wow. Number one. Uh, I hope she's not, because I'm gonna talk about the brothel. Number one. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. Number one, we have the Nike Dunk High All Star. Now, I I really don't. I'm conflicted. I'm I might really be conflicted. wrong, but NBA did a dunk. The all blue satin shiny dunk a little bit ago it was an SB. Mm -hmm. And then this isn't an SB. And I get there's a lot of dunk confusion, but I'm Wait. confused why NBA collaborates with dunks and then, like, well, the SPs and well, the didn't, SB. Well, didn't they release a dunk just like that, like, last year or a couple years ago? A low top blue one? Yeah, like, yeah. no, just, like, exact, like, color blocking and everything. I feel like I've seen that mm -hmm. before. Yeah, but not with that little NBA, what, whatever that heel patch With the is. NBA logo? Yeah, I don't back. think it had that. Okay. Because that's, when, the, when I first saw it, I kept thinking, I was like, it just feels like deja vu. Yeah, it, it's it's just too redundant, and that patch doesn't or the little logo just doesn't do it. No, they sold out. They did what they were supposed to. Yeah, yeah. So, what are they going for right now? What have you seen? Probably only high twos, low threes. I mean, like basic dunks like that aren't aren't carrying the demand like they were. It's like typically the SB. Like, it's still SB for the most part. Um, well, are SBs kind of like? Are they even more sought after now than what they were then? Because, you know, at least back in what, like seven, eight years ago, they felt they actually felt limited. Like in 02 to 03, people were making fun of me for rocking SB dunks. And then 07, it hit like a peak and you started seeing crazy prices. Or like the pigeons probably happened in like what, 05 when the riot started and it like changed the game. Yeah, I think. And I then think, it. No, you know, I think which the, ride are you talking about? The, the ride in New York the that, Jeff, pigeon. that Jeff Staple swears by. Oh, the one that, the one that allowed him to put that colorway on eight other shoes <laughs> for the same check. Hey, if it ain't broke, that, don't fix it. <laughs> but um, and then and then after a seven dunk hype died and it came back. But now it's like back in the day, people knew what SB was. Now it's just like dunks, dunks, dunks. No one has any idea. Like right. I don't even think NBA knows which dunks they're collaborating with or why. I don't hate those shoes. I just uh, they were basic to me. Like the thing that made them stand out was the stamp on the heel. Honestly, first of all, this All Star, this everything All Star related this year was kind of want want to me. So I wasn't that through. I wasn't really that gassed really? up. Yeah, I was kind of. 
I like the All Star Game this year. I like everything that they did. I actually, I would like them to do it like that. Don't do a whole weekend anymore. I think just stick to one day. Yeah, you the one that's because you never went to All Star Weekend. Well, we were supposed to go and we never went, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they cover hey, for that. Hey, that ain't my fault. I, I went. I still went. You guys, you went where to Atlanta? Oh, an All Star Weekend. This past weekend. I mean, this no, past no, no, All Star no, Chicago last year. Oh, I was yeah, supposed yeah, to yeah, go, and then it yeah. just ended up being me. Yeah, but in terms of release, yeah, but you went. But you, what did you do though? Wow! Uh, I got the New Beginnings pack. I got the okay. Then, uh, uh, okay the stop right there. Fries. I'm not mad. I'm mad that I'm even asking you that question. Now. I'm mad. So you basically just cut his mic I, off without cutting his mic <laughs> off. That's really what you just did. I mean, we can actually cut Damn. his mic off. No, I'm mad because like now you brought up that pack. Now I'm pissed off all over again. And that was that when the Quantum dropped. Did they make those in a size 15? Yeah. Oh, they got them. I mean, somebody selling them on StockX for like a million dollars. You got probably it. like two thousand. If you trade in all of your Mitchell and <laughs> only two thousand. You could get them. Why am I going to do that? Because you can get your Mitchell and Ness jerseys again. Not necessarily. It's hard trying to find some of these. It's it's, it's hard to pick up the phone. Ooh. Sometimes. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm just hey, saying. He has interns for that. Oh, yeah. That, yep, see, you guys will have to call for him. That's what it is. See? Okay. Those then, probably not even their phone. Are those your phones that they're holding up? No. I think that's, Are those you guys' phones? Hey, speaking of All-Star Weekend interns, one of them's rocking the Off-Weight 5s. So Who? One of our interns. Oh, uh, uh, Marcus? Yeah, Mark. See, I know their names now. Somewhat. I think you said it after I said it. You got the, you got the black ones on. Okay. Yeah, that was the, that was the best funny, one. Because he likes to try to yeah. battle me. Yeah. Both of them really try. They try. Bless their hearts. He might they win try. today. I huh? like those questions, though. Don't get it twisted. Questions are nice. Oh, those are nice. Though. Those are like the one pair of questions I don't have. So, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Watch. This was, you know what's going to happen. Like, next week, I'm going to find You're going to make that call to Reebok, too, hey, huh? That's right. his compliment. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Come and see. I'm going to have them. They're going to look better on me. That's, that's pretty much what his head's saying. Uh, ugliest release of the week. We got this uh, Nike Carry 7 Play for the Future. You wasn't this, feeling it? This shoe. Yeah, I wasn't feeling it either. This I don't shoe. like Kyrie 7s. I like Kyrie 7s. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out what the hell. Like, ugh. <laughs> actually, actually, it does look like vomit. I, like, literally. Like, how do you look at this shoe and be like, yeah, we're going to sell that? That's dope. That's fine. Uh, have you seen half of the things that have come out in the I know, but this world? shoe in particular. Like, yo, like what? This, this shoe is sitting on the table at Nike headquarters, and everybody, you got like X amount of people sitting around that table, and they're trying to figure out what shoes are going to go in this All Star pack. Because this whole Play for the Future was their All Star pack. And I, and I never thought I'd say this. The KDs look better than the Kyrie's. I never thought I would say that. Actually, you want to know what I think was the best show out of that pack? What's that? The PG. Honestly. Out of the I, entire honestly, I'm pack. That's blank. bold. Huh? That's pretty bold. It, it was the best one out of the entire pack. Uh, that I'm one was trash. Lot. But but like I said, Kyrie's, in my opinion, probably ever since the Kyrie. And probably the Kyrie 3, I'd say, has just been pretty my, lackluster. My only problem with the Kyrie thing is, is that, like, they have the same thing. Like, it, it carries over the same thing on every shoe. They got that the teeth on there. And I don't know what that's about. Somebody, I'm pretty sure Guru is here. He probably would educate me on that. I, I just feel uh, like. His beard is itching with knowledge right now. Yes. Ready to share itching it. Itching with knowledge. Yeah. He's... Uh, but no, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, like, why. Because, <laughs> I don't know. It, that's what makes the shoe seem too similar. Like, it becomes a point where it just seems like the same shoe. I think we're giving this shoe too much attention. It's bad. We don't like it. No, I've all the shit. We talk about Yeezys all day, every day. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's relevant to our listeners that you, we got to stop overlooking. What, what? So what about Kyrie's? There's some I, Kyrie I fans out there. People would agree it's a trash shoe, and we've we've said it's no good. So we, you just want to you just want to move on. We've that. butchered it enough. I think so. It's the Brad Hall of uh, Kyrie's. Yes, <laughs> I will go. I will go as far as saying that. I'm not. I'm not going to slander Brad Hall. Well, I of bet course you not. You got his shirt on. Y'all kind of resemble too. The more I look at you and look at the shirt, that's racist. Is it? I don't think so. Well, no, but I assume the listeners will think so, and we'll get a comment. Do me and C's so. look alike? No, absolutely <laughs> oh, not. Okay. Right, just want to see I don't even know why you'd ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Yeah, good job, Dunks. Good answer. Yeah. All right, way, so way to go, Caesar. Right. European Caesar. So Damn we right. haven't. <laughs> We haven't uh, we haven't done this segment in a while, and uh, are we ready for it? Okay, um, we haven't done this segment in a while, and so uh, I wanted to bring it back. The price is hype. This is where so this segment basically is whenever 
Uh, we get so many shoes. There's a lot of shoes that come out, right? And, you know, reasonable prices. And I hate seeing, saying reasonable because $200 sounds like a lot of money for shoes for somebody that's not a sneakerhead. But reasonable is like 200 and lower. Anything above that is just, you know, it's a little, you really got to justify why that price is. It's a little it outrageous. Is. Yeah. So, with that being said, um, there's a lot of shoes that have ridiculous prices. And just want to test the knowledge of the panel. So, with that being said, uh, the first shoe, the Todd Snyder Special Edition New Balance 992. That's actually kind of hard. And, there's, oh, there's like a cult following for this kind of shoe. By the way, by the way, we're doing the whole prices right thing. So, like, you want to get the closest price without going over? Yeah, we should have the interns do this. Uh, they, we know they don't know. They're interns. That's why we should have them do it. It'd be uh, fun. Yeah, Fuck fun at them. That's like having a five-year-old doing calculus. This is just like you know it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, but when you see them struggling, they're like, "That's ah, true. That's true." I, they can't I, even get coffee orders right. No. Um. <laughs> wow. So, Ty Snyder joints price. Are you asking us? No. Like, yeah. Duh. <laughs> well, you want retail or resale? Retail. Retail. Uh. What was that? A nine nine. Nine nine two. I'd say. By the way, these are horrible. By the way, <laughs> I, don't I, I like those. I just don't find these out. Like, like, you look. Actually, I, feel, I thought it was a bait I collab. Like, I feel like sometimes people throw camo on a shoe because they just mat. They want to mask their inability to design, so just camo know. the shit out of everything. Those are sweet. These are horrible. No, they're not. Um, I'm gonna say two fifty nine. Mm, okay, dunks. Uh, I'm guessing one eighty to two thirty. You, you got to pick a number, bro. One eighty. Have you not Who's watched the prices right? Yeah. All right. Well. Gina was closer. The actual retail price is two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Why? Honestly, I wouldn't pay one fifty for these. Matter of fact, if you're not getting these shoes for free, you're paying too much. Well, you don't really like New Balances, then, do you? No, yes, I do. Well, they're, made, they're made in like, America, I think, right? I mean, he don't care about that. Well, well I'm just trying to come he's, up with He's them, African. Well, you, oh, he's African. Oh, ah, oh, what did he say? I said most New Balance are made in America, right? That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, he's he's African oh. Caesar. Come oh, on, right, man. right, right. Yeah. And before somebody get in the comments, like, oh, you gonna buy American? Look, y'all was wearing Make America Great hats again. Uh, that was made in Vietnam. So I want to hear shit from you. Anyway, uh, where, where are your Mitchell and Ness jerseys made? Aren't they made in Philly? Moving on, <laughs> uh, we have the, uh, the next shoe. It's the Adidas Y3 Grip Low. Uh, GTX, nah. black core white. You, Before you, we do price, fire. Y3 had so much potential. I'm probably going to butcher <laughs> Yohi Yamamoto or whatever his name is. That, had, that, sound, that sounds about had right. Had so much potential. You sound like a parent whose kid dropped out of college, but go ahead. That's exactly how I feel. It's very well put, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell these are supposed to be. Once again, these shoes sit on a desk with a bunch of people waiting to sign off for approval. How it got approved, I don't know. I don't a, know who this appeal It's a fashion shoe. All the Y3. It's like, it's like Ford and Lincoln, though. It's going to be the same thing, and one's going to cost way more. Yeah. It's a, fa it's a so fashion shoe. This is going to be hard to guess. There's, there's no well, yeah, you. I really want to know. I'm going to put you on cheap. 350 I tried. You said three fifty dunks. Yeah, Gino. Uh, I'm gonna say three eighty nine. That's a weird ass price. Well, yeah, both are wrong. It's three hundred dollars. So I'm closer. I win. But no, you, you went, went over. over. Damn it. Aha. Uh -huh. So Gino still Have has one point. Have you not ever watched The Prices Right? Never. You know he has. I've, I've uh, Jeopardy. He's white. Look. All right. Next shoe. So he don't know about the yodeler. He, who doesn't know about the yodeler? Yodeler was great. Yes, he does. You gotta play Plinko. Now this next shoe, I don't know. <laughs> this next shoe, I don't know who the audience was. If you wasn't a Ninja Turtle, I don't know uh, why you would want this shoe. This sh oh, who asked the, for that? Nike Mason tried to do something like yeah. this. The who? ISPA. That seems so uncomfortable. You can't wear socks with it. I'm convinced. Hey, Nike, they don't know. Nike made yeah. special socks for this. First of all, these are Reeboks. Yeah, I was I'm saying he's Nike. He's the he's ISPA he's made a similar one oh, okay. with like the toe cut. So, well, that's, we are, so we that's already know you can't wear Nike socks with Reebok. So that's where Reebok dropped the ball. There, that man. makes it a moot. They they should have made the socks to go. Well, with I'm them. looking at the uh, the sock liner. I don't know if that's supposed to be some type of UGG antibacterial type material. I don't know, but I just know these look stupid. Some shoes look horrible. These just look stupid. If I see somebody wearing these, I'm a point and laugh at you in uh, your face. I mean, all I know is that's a new terminology for a camel toe. <laughs> It's a little oh, off. Boy. I need we the are bill. Just looking I need to get the canceled. bill. I yes. need the bill. I need uh, the bill. I'm going to say, are we still guessing? Yeah. 
90, and I feel like that's high for those. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, the fact that it's, it's a Mason Margiela, I'll say. Yeah, Mason Margiela. Oh, my bad. Mason Margiela, special edition, Reebok Classic Leather Tabby. I, I'm going to say 150. What? Come on, son. I don't know. All right. Now, I just. Now, first of all, let me. Let me speak to, can I speak to the audience? Can I look right in the camera? I want to look right in the camera. Look right in the camera, don't Put you on this one? No, 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 no. Dunks. I want to look right in the camera. I want, I want to explain something. European Caesar. <laughs> I just explained to these people before we even did this segment, right? I explained to them the premise. I broke it down. I say anything over two hundred dollars is expensive. The segment is called the Price is Hype, and this dude says a price of one fifty. Well, he said 90. Why are you not killing him? Huh? He said I'm 90. Sure. I didn't hear him. So I mean, he oh, oh, so you didn't even hear his response. He no, I didn't hear his response. I, I just, man. Wow. Anyway, so you said 90. You said 150. Uh, the by, virtue, by virtue. You win. Yeah, you win, but I honestly don't want to even give you the point for both of y'all being so ridiculous. Can we get a better game the, show? The price. <laughs> the what now? Can we get better shoe selection? I mean, look, I'm going to, look. We're going off expensive shoes. These, for whatever reason, were expensive. They were three hundred and fifty dollars. So Gino gets the point, only because Dunk says something even more ridiculous than one fifty. You're damn right. Yes. I mean, the fact that you even put that shoe up there, though. man. Y'all, y'all are ridiculous. All right. uh, All right. This next shoe. Uh, you want ridiculous? Yes. I'll give you ridiculous. Come oh on, get to the next hey, shoe. Hey, how about this, Caesar? How much are these going for? How about that game? How much? Are, what, what? Your Air Force Ones? Yes. Was that Fat Joe? Let's see if he licks them first. I've never licked these. <laughs> so I did you a favor right there. He ain't even go with it. Uh-uh. I have gave you, you a slam dunks moment. Yeah, see, he ruined it. Nah, yeah, he hey, ruined it. Back, have you licked a soul? Whoa. What? Have you ever licked a soul? <laughs> what you that? Turn the cameras off. <laughs> 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 I'm a, it's what is, what is what this you like? Just ask me? This is like Ghostbusters triple X. I just licked like? the soul, right? <laughs> I'm fighting words. Uh, no, no, no. He ain't Gino for that one. Gino <laughs> no, say it's that. Gino. That's a Gino type question. Dunks. No, that's definitely a Dunks question. Have we put your real name up here yet? Like, you've been Gino, you've been European Caesar? The intro, we got it right. There we go. You might as well call him Guru for now. Yeah, let's call him Guru. Let's call so him. you're saying don't lick the soul? Why, Guru? You really want to. Go ahead. Go ahead and lick the soul if you really want to. You guys want me to lick this hole? I don't know. Do you seem like you want to yeah, ask me. Do it on camera. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Girls, girls, I didn't even want to look. That was uh, nasty. That was, that was man. Yeah. The highlight of the show. Why don't you about even, to get canceled now. I'm saying, why don't you in the shoe get the room? Jesus. Uh, this next shoe. Sponsored we, by the sneaker box. Well, they, well remember, <laughs> we did a couple, about a year or two ago. <laughs> We we did have the uh, the shoe porn that does exist. So <laughs> refresh my memory. You weren't there. <sighs> you were lucky. Mm. Where's Francis when you need him? I know. It would have been nice if he could have came today. Anyway, uh, this next shoe, the Adidas Y3 Grip High GTX. I thought you just this did is the black. No, we did the low. This is the high. So. I'm telling you, Y3 is crazy. Just the price points don't make sense. All right, yeah, here. It's just like a high end Adidas. You want? I love. You know what I love about this shoe? <laughs> First of all, it looks, Wait, like, it what, looks like what can you love about it? It looks like Batman tires on the bottom of the shoe. I thought it was a moon boot. It's that is a ridiculously thick sole. But anyway, what I find funny about that shoe is, you know, you talk to the brands, they're all about the logos and shit, and you know the placement of it, and whatever. And the Adidas three stripes logo is almost it. yeah, it's just almost obscure because the sole has to take up so much real estate on the shoe. I mean, I guess if you're actually in the sneakers, you can kind of tell like it it favors after almost like a top ten or a superstar high, somewhat. No, like but, honestly, like if you kind of like close your eyes and like you know kind of squint real quick, it looks like the new Batmobile. If you melt it, maybe it'll look a little more like that Nike uh, collab ISPA, whatever we were looking at earlier. Oh, that's a that's over. Stick, would you wear these? No. <laughs> would you wear any of the shoes that were on here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so how much do you guys think these are going for? A thousand dollars. You want ridiculous dunks? Uh, I'm gonna go three fifty. Right on the head. You know what? You get two points for that. You get two points for that. Right on the head. Three fifty. Wait, how, why it. does he get two? That's you get two points. It's like when you land on go in Monopoly. You get uh, four hundred instead I of two hundred. I watched the prices right as a kid. They didn't do that. But in the hey, game. well, it, this is called the prices hype. So we're gonna change things a little. If bit. If it was plain Adidas, no Y three, it would be like one eighty two hundred. Same shoe. First of all, does anybody else do that? I feel like I'm the only person that does that. 
What, give two points if somebody... No, 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 no. The, uh, the, if you land on go, you get double. Does they, for, Everybody does that, right? That sounds right. No, I don't think so. No? Yeah, no. You, you strike me as you are the letter of the law type person. Like you. That's how you're supposed to play. Monopoly. Like he's gonna pull out the rule book for anything. Like, which is fine. I, you know, you got. High, but you are. You do have the ability to have house rules. No, so, you don't. Yes, you Only do. Only with Uno. Because Uno is okay. pretty crazy. No, there is no rule book for Uno. Yeah, there, there is a rule is book because Uno has an official Twitter now, and I've had to refer to it. Nobody. Can follows, you, can no, you nobody stack draw it. twos? Can you play a draw two on a draw two? Yeah. Who doesn't? I do, but the official answer by Uno is no. no. Nobody listens to Uno. I'll so you're not, you're not going to listen to the company that made the game. Four on a draw two. <laughs> no, why would okay, I? That is ridiculous. I'm okay. the contrarian. Remember so, that is true. I have to stick to my roots. That's true. But I'm just saying though, like with Monopoly, though, people, you do have the ability to have house rules. Yeah. Because you know what? Because technically, you know the money. Like if you land on uh, the, you know the, uh, you got to pay taxes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Technically, that's supposed to go back to the bank. But you know yeah, how we do. Yeah, we put that in the free party. Technicalities. Thank you. Now that I do. Now, Steve, do you do that? You put it back in the bank, don't you? Yeah. See. See. <laughs> so wait a minute. So when you play Monopoly, literally the game it never ends technically, then, right? Because I mean, most people when they play Monopoly, they just give up after a while and say, I, "I have no chance of owning any more property. I have no money." It's over when I take all your shit. Uh, they, see, that's you know. Okay, I'm about to give everybody a, 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 a insight into how I play because I'm so diabolical. Oh I don't even try to get Monopolies. You know what I do? I get a piece of everything. I want to lock the game up. I want you to submit. I don't want to knock you out. I want you... To me, it's almost like fighting, right? Because you can say, like, if I knock you out, you can say it was a lucky punch. Da, da, da. If I choke you out and you pass out, if I knock you out, if I make you... No, if I make you submit, that's way better than knockout to me. So for me, if I can make... If I can keep the game going forever to the point where you're like, okay, you know what? I'm done. I don't want to play no more. That means more to me than making you go bankrupt. You are... Sadistic. You got issues. I do. Do you I, have, I put do so you, much thought. Do you of fact, have friends? I put. Aren't we? I look. <laughs> I just feel like I just learned something. Just now. I don't know. <laughs> I learned something about myself. No. And so I play Monopoly so much. I know, like whatever you roll, I know where you're gonna land. Because there's only ten ah. sides to the board. You know. Okay. Me, we All play right. the fastest game of Monopoly, by the way. Me and my brothers. We should. We should do. We should do live one air on Monopoly once. We should. Be part of it. We should do it like Jay Z and like do like a real game. cash. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if I play Monopoly, the game doesn't end because I don't give up. Yeah, we just had Woodward Sports just front us the money. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> he gave yeah. the thumbs up. Uh, and then his last shoe, the Adidas Y3 Kiowa? Kiowa? Black and white. $2,000. Oh, whoa, what the hell? Oh. Uh, okay, I, I'll try and be sick. I'm well, say, it's tied be, right now, right? It's, it's tied right now. Okay. The, so this is the tiebreaker. Now, toe, I will say this. The toe looks thin leather. This may lower costs. I will say this, though. But it might of be good all the Y3s I've stitching. seen, these are probably one of my more favorites. I like the back, not the front. I'm not mad at these. Yep. Uh, so do I, Dunks. You know what? And I, I got to so say this, I. too. Shout out to, to Adidas Y3 because it feels like that brand is more the experimental side of, you know, like this get real artsy fartsy with it and see where we can go with sneakers. So I ain't mad at it. Man, so, you know, it it's more, a lot of hit and misses. Look more fartsy than artsy. They might have been the first one doing that ninja toe on a larger scale. No, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> you um, just you just gave them props. I get them props. <laughs> no, I get them props for at least trying to experiment and do something different. That don't mean it's always going to work out well. All right, fuck it, 400. Gino. 499. All right, so once again, Dunks hits it right on the head, four hundred dollars. That's two points. Dunks is our winner. Dunks knows more about sneakers than Gino. Gino's an idiot. All right, I'm leaving. Not I'm out. <laughs> Peace. See y'all next week. Oh man, I needed that. Thanks, guys. All right. I know so, you really uh, just did that to make him feel better. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Whatever. So like, we're gonna take. You got Pepsi to go run after this. So we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, we're gonna come back after a word from my sponsors. Oh, I thought we were. Okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. We're just going to go wow. with it. Hey, look, I Fuck love it. it when it's live. That was great. Bet. Hey, <laughs> all right. So, um, I was going to say, we got sponsors? Crumble Cookies. I saw they were doing a thing the other day. Yeah. They were fucking delicious. Uh, you know what? I, I should have went. I should have went. I think Joey was there. I should have went. He had free Crumble Cookies. Who did? Oh, Joey did? Yeah, Joey did. Oh, <laughs> He's right over there. I mean, too. He can't hear anything. No, he can't hear. Saying, hey, these other we could talk so look much about Dre right now. Even Michigan here, home grown taste best. Yeah. It would have been nice if you would have brought us some cookies. Where is it at though? Uh, on Woodward. 
Okay. <laughs> Horrible. In Michigan. <laughs> I know, right? Like, Somewhere. In the U.S. Google Google it. You got a computer right there. Google it. No, I'm not doing nothing. Okay. I'm already doing well, enough clearly work. you don't care. All right. So uh, there's a lot of shoes that have uh, no set release date, but they're coming out soon. And you guys should already know this, too, because... This year is going to be real crazy as far as release dates because COVID just kind of messed up everything as far as production and, and uh, supply chains and distribution and whatnot. So we've already seen it. Like the University Blue Ones that came out last weekend was supposed to come out, I think, either in January or February. They were supposed they got to come out back. the 27th and got pushed back till the first week of March. Exactly. So things are going to get pushed back. They're going to move around. So There's still more stuff getting pushed back. Yeah. So pretty much all we have is a general idea as far as when shoes are going to drop. So uh, this next shoe, or this first shoe in our coming soon segment, uh, is the Bape New Balance 2002R. Now they, yeah, they only gave us like a teaser type thing. This feels like a movie poster, like when they, like the Justice League, when they tease the black suit. The Superman. poster looks better than the shoe will. I can tell you that. I will agree with you. But it's a dope advertisement. <laughs> I will agree. And like with the way mean, they got the New Balance and the Bape head logo, I, like I, on the I, I like, do that's, like that. That's yeah, clean. yeah, yeah. I and also is, with the Bape logo kind of hidden on the, uh, the, 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 outside, the outside of yeah. the liner there. So. Yeah. So I will agree with you on that. Well-executed advertisement. Yeah. Execution in terms of the actual product, TBD. Yeah. That's the, I mean, I feel like that's the only way you can kind of leave it because I really don't know. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't know. We, yeah. we don't know what that's going to look like. We got, we got literally one-third of the shoe. <laughs> so we still have two thirds left. We don't know how it's gonna look, but maybe like every couple of weeks we'll get to see more and more. I would say this: piece Yo, it together. They, they should do that because I don't want to go too off topic, but it, it was relevant on Twitter this weekend. A lot of the sneak peeks we see are actually fakes, where it's like if the company that is would, true. Where is if a company would just give us like real legit pictures and teasers or segments, that kind of keeps the hype going. Or like true. Well then, I'm curious. You could be honest something. I'm, I'm curious to know would be I don't know what all you know everything you got on that list, but you know that shattered backboard that's supposed to come out. Like, did you guys see that? Yeah. Kind of like the the rumored mm. picture of that. Well, I no. think it, it's like spicy chicken wingers, like one of the, it the looked, fake accounts. It, it, well, it looks horrible though. Like it looks better than the the last one, so. I think the last one looked better. Like the, the shiny yeah, patent material. Yeah, I think yeah. it just looks better. Like this one just looks. I don't, I don't think know, the last one should have been called Shattered Backward. They should have just been called, like, star, sh Shiny Starfish. I mean... Shiny... I, what, yeah, because uh, if they're going with the starfish... Or whatever, color whatever way, orange they call yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Wow. Now, well, I mean, I think they're just going to run with... They're going to turn, like, Shattered Backboard, like how anything black and red is bread and white, red, and black And we got Chicago. a bread mystery coming. I'm telling you... Some I, people photoshopped it. It might be... I know what... The I, I'm telling you what it's going to be. It's going to be the black patent leather, all black with the red swoosh. They're going to trick us again. All right, um, come on. Let's get to the next one. All right. Uh, you ain't had nothing to add to that. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this next shoe, I feel like the only person that's going to be excited about is uh, Dunks. The Adidas Yeezy 500 in flame. And they should be in flame. Like, literally in flames. <laughs> Burn these. I'm not 100% sure what colors I'm looking at. I, I, I don't know. Well, what I, yeah, you are, you're colorblind, like, in all seriousness. Like, uh, I don't hate them, but I'm not sure what I'm looking at. What colors do you think it is? I hate this game. This is too off for me. I was going to say, this is the game we should play. Yeah, like, I see some, like, colors. blues and purples, but it might be humiliating if I'm off. That's, it's, it's oh, some, yeah, you are colorblind, yeah. aren't you? This he, is a tough Dunks one. Dunks is a Z color. Um, oh <laughs> Doo -doo uh, no, I just, man, ugh, I don't know, man. Like, I can't. How? Once again, how are people allowing these shoes to make it to, to the public? I mean, that's just a, that's you a know, horrible mashup of, of colors. What honestly. I will say, this shoe, like, w from when they nicknamed it the, the Mud Rats to the 500s, over time, you've seen he's literally gone to expose the inside. Like, more features from the inside are bring, bringing, being put on the outside, if that makes sense. Oh, they're like reverse, the they're reverse engineering the shoe. They shouldn't do that. Like, if it looks like this, don't do that. I don't care about the engineering part. Like, I don't need to see the engine like you of see my the, car. You see all, like, the I don't want to know holes. if it runs. You see, like, the lace loops and those little things sewn on top? Yeah. It used to all be, like, one internal structure, and now they're, like, trying to make it look. Like, yeah, don't show me that. Yeah, like, if trash. there was a better-looking time that doesn't show me shit, that's fine. I don't need to know how you are engineering your shoes. Like, once again, I, I do not need to see how my car works. I just need to know it works. Like I said, the colorway is what makes it trash. That particular shoe, that... Model, the, that silhouette it's, is it's horrible. It's always it's only good when it's just one solid. Color. Hey, wait, wait, wait. That, I got Brad Hall wearing that silhouette on my shirt right now. 
That makes me hate so that shit So you know what you can do? You can go, you can walk outside, and go stand right fired. there. Yeah, go stand right there on Woodward and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Since like Frogger style. I, I don't know. I think Frogger might move a lot faster. And you will. You I might, just want you to run through traffic right You now. might move at Brad Hall speed. <laughs> I'll ask him if I can borrow some cleats. Nick. <laughs> 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 Anyway, uh, this next shoe, uh, and this is another this is another situation of not knowing what the show is going, not knowing what the shoe is going to look like. The Zion Williamson, uh, Jordan Z code. Oh God, don't, no! I I hate this picture. I don't know, like, no, like, why would you show us this this point have, of view have, of the shoe? Have no other angles leaked. No, no. But I guess that's the point, though. I guess that's the point. But, but the, what makes me mad about it is, I mean, they actually set the photo up. Like they got the foliage right there, like. Did but they that, though? But look at it. Yeah. Like it's setting up there, but that's the only angle that you see. Like I want to see what the actual shoe look like. It looks like it's been worn. I kind of like the okay. I need another Zion verse. I've himself. seen it twenty times. Like sometimes you see a picture so many fucking times. By the time you see the sneaker, it's like oh yeah. But like with this, it keeps you on your toes wondering. But then here's the thing though. Like we were talking about the New Balance shoe we saw earlier. I'm intrigued to see what the rest of that shoe looks like. I don't. I'm yeah, not, that that was like a well taken picture. There's yeah, like a, this is kind of like all right, go outside real quick, <laughs> throw this on the ground. I mean, just from the front of the shoe, it makes me think it's gonna look like a mellow. Oh, but I mean, I, I hope Jordan Brand does them right. Am I seeing a double tongue, or is that just like a, a no? No, that's, 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 that's a single tongue. Yeah, it looks like it's just got a extra material right there. The one thing it has going for it is that it does not have Yeezy tongues where they got to show you the engineering. Just give us a simple tongue. You know, I don't need nothing too much. Now, it looked like it's something on the tongue, like something stitched on there. It looked like a pepper. Yeah, like a hot wing. That's yeah. what it looked like it's supposed a to be. A pepper in order, that honestly, that's yeah. what it looks like. Wow, that's racist. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, this that, shoe. I'm just mad like you, you put the leak the leak photo of the shoe out and he didn't wear it in the All Star game. Like that would have been just the perfect market. Because they were trying to push the thirty fives. You know, they had everybody wearing different colors. Nah, what I know, I know. I'm with you. I agree. He should have wore like that's how you build entry. That's especially how Jordan used to do it. Yeah, exactly. Especially for Zion. This is first All Star game. Yeah. That's the perfect time to you know push that shoe out there. Yeah. Uh, let me see. The next shoe doo -doo 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 -doo. is a Yeezy, the okay. Adidas Yeezy 450 Dark Slate. All right, call me when it's. So if you love the white pair, you're really gonna love this black pair. This is stupid. Go this ahead, is Dunks. It's your show. Go ahead. This makes me not want to buy sneakers. Just no in more. simple terms, this this is similar to me to the the Daybreak or Overbreak or whatever that Nike collab we had earlier was on the Fab Five list. Yeah. What was Stop. It but I, okay, reminiscent. It's not. Slightly reminiscent. No, no it's, it's I not. would agree with you. No, no. it's reminiscent. How reminiscent? Because it has that cloudy outsole thing going for it. Now I'm not saying they look alike. I'm not saying they're identical. I'm reminiscent. Like okay, they, they, they you could put them in the same. It's just a little sharper. family. They might be cousins, they may be distant cousins, but you, they in the same family. You know what the shoe actually looks like? What? Is a pair of socks stepped in vinyl. No, it, it looks like Adidas has a one of their football cleats. It legit looks just like that. It looks like you was putting on some socks and then you stepped in some symbiote. That's what I was saying, yeah. Yeah. But like, regardless regardless, <laughs> all you black. You put that shoe on, you just turn you gonna turn into venom? Yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. It looks like venom is trying to engulf your oh, foot. Oh god, now I feel like you just gave him an idea it's gonna be a black and white version of it. You know it is. Venom. You Jesus know it's coming. Christ. You know it's coming. There's no way they don't do that. Okay, uh, the first one last week was white. This one's gonna be black. You gotta see the zebra colorway gone. You know it's coming. The mulatto colorway. Zebra. But here's, my, here's my beef with that shoe though. And the shoe's already trash just by itself. The on feet picks have not done this shoe no favors. They look horrible on feet. The I only on see. feet picks I've seen is Kanye himself wearing them. They look horrible. It does so. Not gonna horrible. Brad, if you're listening, we need a oh. sneaker review. No, he don't. He's gonna pull out. He's gonna find the the uh, the cleat version. He is. He's really yeah. gonna wear the cleat version. Yeah. 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 Dummy. Uh, this next shoe. Oh, by the way, these shoes that we already mentioned, they're supposed to come out sometime soon, sometime this spring. So once again, keep a heads up. Uh, if you really, really want some of these shoes. You don't want that. Uh, you don't want that easy. This next shoe or this next pack is scheduled for sometime in July, and that's the Cause. Uh, Cause teamed up with Sakai. Uh, they got a Nike Blazer low pack. And this is my first time seeing this. Honestly, though, I got to say, okay, one, I'm not mad at the blue pair. The red pair, uh, I'm not mad at either one. I'm not one. mad at either one. I, you know what it is? I just feel like I've seen it already. That's what I was going to say. Well, I, I, Sakai, I mean, I, 
honestly, I don't even understand what the cause part is. Maybe the colorway. I don't know. But this looks pretty much like every Sakai Blazer release we've seen in the last year. Well, and that's so, what I was curious to see. What's on the tongues? If it's actually going to have the cause two X's. It looks like it looks like it has the I, something cause. On cause the is big for like the X's and logo, whatever. But like a big selling point on the last two shoes was the actual material on the sole. Mm. Or like uh, I don't know if it was suede, but like that furry material on the actual where it would be rubber. I think that was a huge selling point. I don't see it on these. Yeah. Uh, this next one is the off-white Nike Air Force One Low University Go. That's the one LeBron wore at mm. uh, the All-Star Game. There you go. When it, uh, when it comes to all these, I like the black one the best. I think it was the uh, uh, Museum of Modern Art. But they know. also did the MCA, which is blue. We know you like yeah. the black one so the best. So speaking of which, I'm glad you brought that up. Once again, this shoe was supposed to come out in July too, but exclusively at Virgil's ICA Boston exhibit. Um, so coming for you, Boston. Pretty much, if you live in Boston, you got the. Uh, Does it come the with the marker? These. Does it come with the Virgil Sharpie? <clears throat> so you can write your own message. I don't know. Honestly, though, I like these. I never. I'm, I'm not been a big fan of the off white collection so far. There's been some that have been decent. There's others where. Can we save that? Is there some way we could save what you just said? He likes an off white. Oh, I have an archive of everything. Don't worry. Okay. Perfect. Oh, do you? Okay, well, I'm glad you do. But these are not bad. I ain't mad. And, like, I'm glad that Nike is actually, or somebody's picking a different color than black, red, and, and, and what are, you know, infrared. And well, they did, like, like Doug yeah, said, they, they did the MCA one where it was, like, the powder blue, so, which I thought that one wasn't as bad. You had to be in Chicago for that, but, uh. Because you just, had to actually be at the museum for it, right? I was sitting on my ass in my house. I spoofed my location, uh, little iPhone trick. Ship right to my house. Damn, that's a lot of Yeezys coming out. Uh, this next one supposed to come out in the summer, so I guess this is going to be one of the summer shoes. Even though I don't know, this doesn't look like a summer shoe to me. But the Adidas Yeezy 700 Boost, was it minivan? Is that what it's supposed to stand for? I think so, and I can't Bright stand senior. these. The first person to to tease these or show these was uh, Takashi 69, whatever we're calling the Rainbow Hair Snitch Rapper. And ever since then, I just can't fuck with this version of the silhouette. Am I the only one that heard that? I had to get no. out there. <laughs> that was funny. I um, like that. I don't like them, simply, simply put. And I don't care how limited they are. They're Honestly, I'm going to tell you what. These are the least offensive ones I've seen. Damn it. <laughs> and it's just, it's I feel hard. like that's the best compliment I can give it. Stick. Um, yeah, to me. They look like old high school cleats, like the indoor <laughs> cleats that you used to play with. But out of all of them, th this is what I rock, man. So, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd wear these. I, I ain't mad at these. It's all, it's all right. It's all right. That's, yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's all right. I don't know how much they're going for. Uh, I actually I, like that color, though. That, that color, color nice. on there is pretty, it's pretty nice I like, on there. Yeah, the, it goes with the black. Yeah. What's that, gamma blue? Or could Adidas not oh, use gamma the, blue? The, the, the cayenne color Or cyan blue. Yeah, cayenne, cyan. Cy, bright cyan. Yeah. yeah. Seaweed, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Kith. Kith is uh, he's in, back in the news again. Uh -oh. uh, he has a New Balance RC 1300. More from Um I kind of like these. What am I seeing on the toe? Uh, that looks like, like a, a, look like a Pegasus. A, Pegasus. Uh, I was gonna yeah. say is that a unicorn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, I like, I like that, I like that. Uh, that France Air Force One. Uh, having, uh, having I'm not, the, I like and textured with the the kith writing is kind of nice. It's different. I like that subtle detail to it though. I like that. I ain't mad at what, it. What the unicorn or just that little thing? Like whatever it is, it looks like Peg it kind of looks like a mosquito. A but, a, you know, a whatever. Mosquito? <laughs> a mosquito unicorn. It looks like a shrimp with wings. Like I don't know. It's, a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Butterfly shrimp. Uh, I mean, I ain't mad at it. Just it's decent. It's a decent looking shoe. Mm. Like if I went into a New Balance store and they had them in my size, because most of their prices are decent, I would rock these. Yeah, but it's Kith. So. I really like the texture on the uh, on the New Balance logo. It that would probably be like two fifty, three hundred. Mm. The game's over, Gino. No, no. Uh, this next shoe, the acronym Nike Blazer Low, supposed to come out this fall. Uh, right now, we just have a rendition. Whoa. Shout out Pi. I used to be in that group. What group? Pirates. Oh, okay. There's a little spinoff of Easy Mafia. I don't know what to think about these. I, I, honestly, I thought I was looking at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cartoon. That's the first thing. I like Shredder. That's the first <laughs> thing I thought about. Well, you know, I, I used to work with the guy who does the Photoshop for Pi. Yeah. And he's usually pretty spot on. But this is not the best... Uh, 
most yeah, realistic I'm, photo I've seen. Like so, so you've actually seen the real shoe? No, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's subject to change. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Shredder, Foot Clan. Yeah, no, this is definitely a, bebop. Like this is definitely a stick shoe right here. Like we we, we got to pull our money together to get this shoe for stick. Like oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't turn away a gift. It's you a do gift it on the you, show. You do it all the time. That is true. Yeah. See. Okay, yeah, I would be a hypocrite if I... We should get our... The interns. We should get this for the interns. Nah, they, no, it's too they deserve though, nothing. Yeah. But our content, our resentment. Um, we got two shoes left. So these shoes I'm are... i add one to make that three. This is another fall shoe. Uh, the Fragment Nike Dunk High City Pack. Once yeah. again, dunks are all the rave right now, so I already know there's going to be a lot of hype around these. Well, it's plus it's Fragment, so... They cool, I guess? Like, I... Of course, it's a Chicago color blocking, so I mean, that's gonna go crazy. I like that bubblegum one. Yeah, though. yeah the bubblegum one. I like the yellow, the yellow one. Yeah. Sorry, that, that's pretty. Nice. You know why? Because it's different. Yeah, but I mean, the other thing too is it, it makes me think of no about time out. The that that colorway has been done before. When on what? Yeah, uh, either a dunk or a Jordan one. But Maybe, I think man. this is like paying homage, homage to it. It's, Probably on a dunk. Wait, yeah, cause, I, cause I don't know a, if it was fragment, but I, they've definitely had something similar like that. Well, before. yeah, because it's a city pack, so isn't that is that that's not London? Because I think the black and purple one is supposed to represent London. It's definitely a city pack, but I don't know which is which. Uh, well, I like it. I mean, it's not a bad pack. I just you know, hey, speak, I already know. Speaking of fragment, have you seen all the photos floating around of the Travis oh, Jordan one fragment? Yeah, I'm glad. So yeah, let's pull up that picture because this this is the one I really want to go in on. And this is where the controversy came up about are we seeing these leaks from like the manufacturers or from like fakes or where where is the source? Well, if you do some more research and dig and you know uh, into the oh uh, the West Coast streetwear Joe and Ann Herbert situation, uh, you know a lot of employees are coming out and saying that Nike and we already knew this like that's part of their marketing right they these pe- how are these people getting access to these shoes like part of that access is these brands they know. They don't have to spend hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars into marketing anymore because they can just leak a photo, and that does all the marketing for them. Right. When was the last time you seen a commercial for a shoe? Right. So stock X with Wale drinking like a beverage. Time yeah, out. Well, yeah. that, that was just dumb. That was just. Josh. I don't even think that was stock X. Wasn't it? At that time, I think it was still campless, wasn't it? No, that was, that was just X. Josh oh. trying to show off who he knew. Here's the thing. <laughs> I like Josh too, Josh. By the way, I mean he's a millionaire. Why, you know? I didn't know you. Millions like of him. reasons to like him. Yeah. But here's the thing: I thought he was one of the people on your shit list. Ah, uh, 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 well, you know, depending on the love moment. relationship. Dep- dep- he on hates the us at times. Yeah. Huh? Well, he shouldn't anymore. He's got nothing to do with them anymore, right? Yeah, he's left the company, yeah. so he's doing his own thing. He's doing like cars now. Yeah, I see that's starting to blow up again. Hey, are we yeah. still talking about upcoming releases? With no, yeah. Days? So we talking about this Travis Scott travesty right here. Here's the thing. Oh, I like these. So, of course you do. Here's the thing. <laughs> so we already know how the leaked photos and how that shit. I, I do not buy these whole companies not knowing how these photos end up uh, online or whatever. They know exactly how these end up in there. They have relationships with all these leakers or whatever. Um, like I said, if, if you talk to, uh, I think, I don't know who did it. Somebody did an interview with past employees because they were talking about the whole Joe and Ann Herbert situation. And the employees were kind of like, yeah, like, they know how much the resale market has added value to their product. Like, if you see an Air Jordan 11 going for $500, that adds value, you know, at least intrinsically to other Air Jordan 11s. Because, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so they love that shit. And then when they retro it, now they can raise the price and justify it. And they might sell you right. inflation and all this other shit, but they're like, okay, we see everybody paying 500 for it. We were selling it for 150 so we know we can sell it for 2 and get away with it. So with this shoe, so you know, past the leaks part, talking about this shoe specifically, horrible color blocking. This is just, I mean, if there was a way to make the Travis Scott one look even dumber, this was a way to do it. This reminds me of a skate shoe by DVS called the Carry Gets Two, which executed this colorway very well. This and I don't know fake. how many skaters listen, That's but it's, it's reminiscent in terms of color blocking. It, it looks like a fake. It does. The, remember the toe fact, dip looks wrong. You know what I'm gonna tell? I'm, I hope people remember this. I don't know how many people are gonna remember the uh, the Orlando Sevens. This is years ago. Oh, out the pack. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that, the first? Remember the first iterations we saw? Oh, they were horrible. They were black and had the pinstripes. Yeah. Uh, or at least the um, uh, how do I want to say on it? The, the on the side paneling. Oh, the overlay. Yeah. Yeah, the overlay on the Sevens had the the it was like black 
suede or something at the pinstripes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like the Orlando Magic jersey yeah. and then like the toe part was white and whatever. And they looked like fakes. Yeah. And then they changed it and they ended up coming with the all white version. Um very underrated pack, by the very way. Very underrated. Yeah. This reminds me of that where this looks like the way it's color blocked well, it I mean, looks fake. I, I, the the one thing that I actually dislike the most about the shoe, more yeah. so than anything, is the sail color midsole. Because it just doesn't it, that it, 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 yeah, yeah. it doesn't it go doesn't. with it at all. It's, it's like that sail color looks good with like whenever they do like the brown and the earth tone colors. Or even like OG colors because you know it gives that appearance that it's yeah, but aged. That, that just looks I hate first of all, I hate aged missiles. That that's me personally. You know, I try to keep my shit as clean as possible. But uh this shoe I mean I wasn't a big fan of first Travis Scott. I'm not really crazy about these. And so I mean we just we are at the point now where if a celebrity comes out with anything, their fans are gonna buy it regardless. So Well, especially with this being a collab between Travis Scott and uh Fragment, right? What's that saying? Interns, y'all like these? He's looking around. We took you the intern. Do you like do you like those Travis Scott's? No? Yeah, so no. We, we, we don't good, like it. The interns don't like we it. We got good interns. Hey, they know what's up. If that's the list, there's one more I wanted to add to upcoming sneakers with no concrete release <laughs> dates. <laughs> the Wasted Youth SB Dunks. I don't know if it's possible to pull up a picture of that. The SB, the Wasted SB Dunks? Wasted Youth. Why are they, um, why it's an the upcoming SB wasted? Dunk collab, but if you look, the toe's different, and it's almost reminiscent of like a Court Force vibe, and it's got like a rose on there. It's black. It's dark. I need them. If anyone's listening, I'll take that Oop size 11. Appreciate. That's why he. Of course. That, that yeah. No. Yeah, it was, uh, no. Pull it up. It's, it's a it dope was, sneaker coming up. That's a little bit different than right there. I mean, it it, it is different. It's different. I, I, I will. You know say what? Honestly, and it's I'm, clean. And if you look at the I'm, back, I'm it's got like rings it. on it. I'm not mad at it. I, at my, all. my initial reaction was to shake my head, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Dunks. There's yeah, not there's right. not crazy hype behind it. I don't even know the full story behind it. Give but it this, time. This shoe caught my attention. I'm like, this is this is on my you list. You know what make those shoes pop? White yep. laces. I agree. Or, or I mean, or you could throw the red laces in there too. But there's no, something white about that ones. toe. A lot of people were like, the toe is wrong, and I'm like, I, I kind of like what they're doing. I with like it. what they did with it. I like that's what I'm saying. I like I like. Thank the, you, Dunks. I, this is what I'll be saying about collaborations. Can we Do say something that? different. Can that be a drop? Can we say I'm so that? happy I wasn't attacked because I'm really looking forward to this. Can we get thank you, Dunks? I don't even want to finish my thought. I don't even want to because nah, now it sounds like I'm giving them a compliment. I don't you are. Nope. Are you a uh, strike that from the record? Hey, it's a sneaker <laughs> show. I said I like the sneaker. And that's just what it is. No, but I'm glad you pointed it out because when, usually when we do collaborations, people do the most basic shit and throw their brand on it and call it a collaboration. And it's like, no, take the, take the time to do something different. Take a silhouette. You know, use some materials that haven't been used before. Do something funky with the design that hasn't been done before. That looks like that. Now, you ain't got to like it, but I do appreciate the fact that they tried to do something unique and kind of put their mark on the dunk. So... You know, I ain't mad at those. I like the red stitching on there as well on the yeah. back. Like I think that's pretty. Hey, it's different. Two pairs pretty. of these. I'm gonna beat these to shit. I'm. Wow. <laughs> Todd. Well, at least we know you're gonna wear them. Yeah. I, I give them props yeah. for that too. See. You, I ain't mad at that. Like if you gonna wear them, that's fine. Uh, shout out to you, Dunk. I don't Thanks, like. Man. You know, I'm not a big fan of Lowe's because you know I wear a size 15, so that's not necessarily the the shoe for large feet but well, they know. probably won't make that in the 15 though in all honesty probably not yeah, so probably uh, go yeah. to a 13. they're doing me a favor anyway what's our live chat looking like what are people saying on there I don't know if I can handle this <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that uh, he's all three okay yeah he's yeah, yeah. Gino Dunks and me let me see here just uh y3 binion special a i hate how late i am the color blocking is ass i'm assuming they're talking about those uh, travis <laughs> scotts that you guys are talking about um looks like someone threw up on lucky charms that's probably the yeezys that they were talking about no, probably Kyrie, the Kyrie. oh, oh yeah, the Kyrie. Stop, yeah, stop yeah. motion vomit on that one so yeah yeah you're getting getting a lot of hate on the shoes that we all hate so yeah we nice. all hate we yeah, all yeah, agree so it's nice. there we go. <laughs> we're all contrarians yes. in the end when people say we are the voice, we are literally voicing the opinions of the community. I mean, I'm the biggest hater, so you it know, appears hate, we hate, know hate. what we're talking about. All right, let's eh, get to every now and then. Let's get to some sneaker news. Uh, Melody Asani, we talked about her. Uh, she is named the creator director of Full Locker. Shout out to her. 
Um, like I know we said some stuff earlier. It wasn't so much. It's aimed not at directed her. towards her. No, at like all. she's no. more. Than, first no. of all, she's more than deserving of any opportunity. And she more than gets. qualified for that as well. You know, I just wish those opportunities would go towards other deserving people. Like once again, it feels. like well, Let me get to the story, and then we'll we'll, we'll elaborate after that. Uh, an article written by Victor Dane for Soul Collector, uh, Foot Locker, has appointed Melody Asani as the creative director of his women's business. Melody will lead in the development of content and products for Foot Locker's uh, women's category. This includes creating women-specific apparel capsule collections, as well as curating Nike and Jordan products for Foot Locker in an effort to diversify its selection, which is largely designed by and for men. Uh, Melody's first capsule collection will launch this summer online and in-store at Foot Locker's across the U.S. and Canada, and also in select stores in Europe and the Asia Pacific. Um, once again... Let me, I just for people before they run and be like, oh, they hate no melody. Nobody's hating no melody. Once again, her resume uh, is ridiculous. I mean, it's nothing bad on it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't do nothing but applaud what she's been able to do. Um, but it just seems like so often that whenever there's opportunities like this that open up, they usually go to the same handful of people, and it doesn't seem like brands or companies anymore take the time to develop talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you uh, got to be famous to get the opportunity. To get the opportunity, but yeah. you know, my whole attitude is a shout out to Melody right there. My whole attitude is, and my uncle used to always say this: nobody is anybody till they're given the opportunity to be somebody. And I don't know if that if anybody that went over people's heads, but you know, like who is no, Michael Jack? Who is Michael Jackson if Barry Gordy doesn't give them an opportunity? Who is Diana Ross? If, you know what I'm saying? Like I, mean, who, I was actually going to go way deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Who is Michael Jordan if he doesn't get drafted by the Bulls? You know what I'm saying? Like no, I get it. Who is Dunks without the sneaker box? Exactly. So you have to be given opportunities. You know who is the sneaker box? You know until Wilbur Sports, you know, brought us on the network. The whole point is you have to be given opportunities that you take advantage of to show your greatness. Yeah, but then... And so if you got to be great already just to even get that opportunity, what do I need the opportunity for? But then it lets you know that for Foot Locker, it's just a, it's a name grab. I mean, yeah. I mean, you definitely... Yeah, they, they're they trying to it's, draw it's, people to... Yeah, I mean, again, look, look what You would month, think Foot Locker would not to do look that. Look what but. month we're in. You know, March is, you know, now... It's, it's Women's it's, International. It's, yeah, it's International, international Women's, women's Day. Is, yeah, so, I mean, there's that behind it. Um, she's a very popular name in the design and sneaker designing. I mean, yeah. she did have one of the better Jordan ones out of that entire pack that came out yeah. uh, last year. Um, I used to always so, find that funny. Like even you know, not even counting these type of high profile opportunities, but like like regular jobs. And it's like asking for these credentials. It was like, well, okay, if I gotta have like, like where can I get a job where I can build up these credentials? Right. Well, and like I said, the problem that I have with it would be so. Where are some of the other designers that you know are not? melody that you know maybe have like smaller clothing lines or you know maybe they're doing something uh designing for a sneaker company and they just need the opportunity yeah but also why is Foot Locker waiting until now to be able to put someone in that because it's international women's day that's, that's why, why i said it just feels like a name our department was like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why it just feels funny to me but i don't want to sound like that you know i'm hating on like i don't want anybody listening to this think that we're hating on melody getting this opportunity because oh, no. she's well deserving of it like i said that jordan one mid that she did last year that was one of the better jordan one mids yeah I've i just i'm just saying if there's other opportunities for women i would like these brands to actually do the due diligence instead of just going on instagram and looking at follower counts and being like okay her well the other part would be like actually do some research actually get up from behind your desk off your computer and step outside whatever building you're in you and talking, actually engage the community around you. That's are you what talking I'm saying. To stick? I'm talking to everybody. I feel like he was talking to Stick. Stick literally lives here. Like, he stays in that <laughs> booth. There's a pillow and a makeshift bed behind him. Nice little studio. Yeah, this is my home. This is my home. Thank you guys for coming here and treating my home <laughs> so well I, and, and letting me in on this conversation. You're such a gracious uh, uh, host, by the way, too. Hey, man, we're happy to have you guys here as a part of the network, for sure. Hey, man, most definitely. We're happy to be here. Like, once 100%. again, since he brought that up, like, shout out to uh, Wilbur Sports. Um, I know, you know, we uh, we tend to uh, act a little blackish around here. Uh, sure not do. showing up on time. <laughs> Uh, showing up on CP time, but and it was only two. Of us it was only two. Of us. The one person that showed up on time was a white guy. So I was early. You can't surprise, argue with this fact. Surprise! <laughs> I mean, it's only right. I mean, but know. no, I mean, but no. Shout out to you guys. You I know, got a real excuse, so I don't know about C's. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely. Uh, 
a work in progress, but I definitely, you know, definitely I uh, think it's a good marriage and can't it wait to see what It feels like we can. home. Yeah, it does. It definitely. Like, already I feel, I feel comfortable. welcomed. I definitely feel comfortable already. Like, last week I'm it was a leaving. lot of nerves. I don't yeah. know about y'all. You know what? I'm not leaving. Oh, yeah, no, there's no point in leaving. No, yeah. we're here. Yeah. You hear that stick? We're not leaving. We're moving in with you. Yeah, we're you got roommates. Now. I'm happy for it, man. I want this family to take over the whole fucking city. So, yeah, as long as we keep adding family members and beast modes like you, it, it's over for everybody else. Hey, hey, hey that's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, <laughs> this story right here. So, Reebok. <laughs> Nobody wants Reebok. It feels like this story has been a story like all year. It's only what? What about March? Adidas trying to sell Reebok? Yeah, hey, Adidas. It's like this little puppy you see and no one will adopt it and you keep going back and it's still there and you feel bad. That's it what it feels like. older and older and finally someone's like, all right, I'll take the goddamn dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what's, what's the going price? That, uh, uh, let's see. An article written by Mallory Chin for Nice Kicks. This Adidas bike? is officially, officially, because they kind of were hinting earlier, so officially announced plans to sell the underperforming so Reebok brand. Coming. Uh, which they acquired 15 years ago for $3.8 billion as part of the five-year strategy. Uh, Adidas has already begun a formal process to divest in Reebok. Uh, Adidas will report Reebok as a discontinued operation from the first quarter of 2021 Damn. on March 10th. So, does yeah, the already. Reebok deal, so, just this week. Does it come with any athletes under contract? No. Any, any athlete they had noteworthy, Adidas took. Yeah, John Wall. I think he was the only one, but then he left, didn't he? They so, took them. So whoever buys Reebok, are they buying the infrastructure, like they just getting, the rights and the They get a ham rights? sandwich and Allen Iverson jersey. I was going to say, <laughs> I, think it's, it. I, I think it's just going to be the name and everything that's up under the brand of Reebok. They getting Allen Iverson and Cardi B. Oh, shit. All right, I mean, let's fire. make a bid then. I was going to say, I think if all three of us throw $5 in, I think we could probably buy Reebok. Honestly, yeah, I think that would be Interns, the party. We, we need about $5 <laughs> from y'all as well. We'll probably be the biggest investment group to date. Ross got on. Ross got on questions, so it's perfect. There we go. Yeah, see? Yeah. So, so we should get a discount. We should. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Trusted banking sources state that Reebok could sell for over $1.2 billion, which is far below what Adidas paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> Typical see, Adidas. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're about Adidas. to lose $3 billion if they're lucky. Time out. This Typical is, Adidas. If Adidas got a problem with that, it is your fucking fault. You guys have undermined Adidas from the very beginning. Anything good they had, you took. You were the Daimler to their Chrysler. You took all the stuff that was that made them great. Damn. You took it for yourself. Keep going. And now you acting like, oh, well, they're no longer valuable. Yeah, if you, if you pillage... Like, if you go to Wakanda and you take all the stuff, all the technology, and then all that's left is, you know, a few huts here and there, and then you try to sell it, it's like you took everything that was valuable about the brand for yourself, Beyonce, took everything, and now all of a sudden, y'all like, man, we can't do nothing with this brand. Yeah, but, like they, haven't, but they haven't tried to do anything with it. That either. is messed up. They haven't put anything into they it. They ain't put nothing. They have not put a damn thing into Reebok. Took everything that Reebok had that was great, though, because people forget Reebok was the number one brand back in 1997. So it wasn't that long ago. Now I think maybe it was even a the time, time before then as well. What probably yeah, like they was going head to head with Nike. Well. They was going head to head with Nike throughout the 90s. So you know, so you know what's gonna happen. Was that you know Nike gonna buy them? I hope so. I hope Nike buys them. Because honestly, honestly, I feel like that's the only reason why they haven't sold them yet. Like, they my, know. my fondest memory of anything Reebok related was that the movie Men in Tights with Dave Chappelle where he pulls out the Reebok palms. Yeah. And- that, that was, was like my first experience. That was a Is great it, movie. And yeah, Reebok that got was a like nice... my first intro to Reebok. I was like, all right, these are cool, but that was like 1992 or something. Reebok got a nice catalog. They got a real nice catalog, no, they but they, do. it's plus, underused. But plus, this will also give Allen Iverson the ability to wear Jordans whenever he wants. And I mean, he's doing it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can get paid for right. it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Nike, just please buy Reebok. Like, just when you think about what Nike would be able to do with that brand and how it would elevate it. Now, in all fairness, Nike has bought brands and fucked it up. No, no they, yeah, they have. have. They, they have. have. But I think I think with Reebok, I think they would look to because for them they would look at it and say, "Hey, look, Adidas, this is what you could have did. You know you why? Couldn't do. You know why? And I, this is why I think they could say. Honestly, I think that was probably one of the better silhouettes. Shout out to my man X, by the way, because he was the designer behind it. That's one of the hybrids, and I'm usually not a fan of hybrids. However, now this colorway might not yeah, be the, that, that the colorway, colorway might not be the best. The color, but it's not bad. No, it's not it's bad. It's not good. But anybody knows anything about the Allen Iverson signature line? 
like to see him put together all those different uh, uh, designs from all the Iversons and make a shoe out of it. I thought this was probably one of the better. This is definitely by far better than any fusion I've ever seen <laughs> from Nike and Jordan brand. But that's neither here nor there. Point is, Reebok. If Nike was to get Reebok, they don't necessarily have to... I mean, of course, Nike would go into their bag, you know, as far as, like, their, their catalog of uh, shoes. For sure. But they would look at it like, you know... It's not like Reebok... I don't want to say it. It would be a situation where, like, Reebok wouldn't have to stand on his own, per se. Reebok would kind of... I guarantee what they would do, they would stick to the stuff that they know they could sell. You know, at one point, Reebok tried a little skateboard line with DGK and Stevie Williams, and it kind of flopped, but, like, they put effort and had some decent marketing. I think that was, like, their last big effort that caught my attention. I think it would be more streamlined. I think what they would do with Reebok is, I think they would... I, I, obviously do with the Iverson line and the Iverson's, other, the Reebok Classics. Yeah, the Reebok Classics. I think they would do something with those shoes. Dope. Fire. Those answer ones. I still gotta get those. Those white and red joints. I got the black ones. I don't have the red ones. But those are, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you got a whole signature line that y'all ain't doing shit with. Y'all don't because they don't know what to do. Well, here's the other thing that I'd be curious to know, too. So, does Reebok own the DMX technology? I would highly I doubt it. I would think it. so. Well, why oh. wouldn't it? So... Because Adidas licenses a lot of their technology. Yeah. Well, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. So what if Nike does If Nike buy? was to get... Oh, my God. <laughs> Man. That's the other part about it. That, I didn't yeah, even think about that. It's the skater like shoes. That. So that is a... No, oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that same shoe in a basketball material. That's more of dunk style right there. Yeah, I can't... That's... No. Nah. No. Listen, we ain't saying Reebok perfect. Shout out to DGK. I'm just saying Adidas has not done... Reebok any favors and is now like, oh, look at this under underperforming company. Well, you take everything good. Think about Reebok had Beyonce. Oh. Like, replace Cardi B with Beyonce. They would have did so much more. The, yeah. the rollout would have been way bigger. It would have been worthy of it, too. <laughs> but no, I'm saying, like, if, if Nike can't own the DMX technology. Um, what they could do with the uh, Allen Iverson line. For one. They got other shit too, though. They got the but, Reebok Classic. Like that re- that's the part I'm saying is like, underutilized line of the shoes, pumps, bro. The pumps, man. Oh, the pumps. I, put, I, I a pump, put a pump on an SB Dunk with that fat tongue. But then the other thing would be like, just imagine what they could do with all of the Shaq shoes. Look what they too. did for Converse. Think about all the Shaq shoes, man. It's a wrap. That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, they, there's so think, much that they can do. If Nike was to pump get on a Michael Jordan, think about it. They got Michael Jordan, Kobe, Penny Hardaway, LeBron James, uh, uh, Allen Iverson, and Shaq. Under one roof? Come on, bro. Come on, fam. That's not even fair. Sean Kemp? Because of the... Uh... In the third quarter of 2020. <laughs> Reebok don't, net don't sales, shit on the kamikaze. Bro. Reebok net sales on, fell 7% to $488 million after falling 44% in the previous quarter. Adidas also has a few other options, which includes spinning Reebok as a standalone public company or selling it to a private equity firm or major sports retailer. Uh, as of right now, possible buyers include firms like Premier, Premira and uh, Triton there and go, the VF Corp. How about those pumps? Uh, I kind of... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, mean, I was just saying, I like 90s them. vibes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean... The favorite... The only pumps I ever owned was that A-Life tennis ball material. That was pretty hard, too. Yeah. Listen, if I buy a pair of earrings, I'd definitely buy a pair of Reebok pumps. Like, it's not even a question. I, it's, um, it's a very similar shoe. Very similar. I would yeah. say the Reeboks are probably more comfortable. <laughs> you wings are hot and heavy. Kind of like your mama. Um... I don't think anyone's ever given Reebok this much attention, <laughs> to be honest. I like how you just just, just slid oh, down and in there. It was there. It was like a wide open layup. I was like, I'll wow. be a fool not to take the shot. Uh, David Beckham. David Beckham is making a documentary about the Adidas Puma rivalry. An article written by Victor Dang for Soul Collector, British super soccer superstar and longtime Adidas athlete David Beckham and his production company, Studio 99, is partnering with Boat Rocker Studios as well as Unscripted and his company, Matador Content, to produce the title World... Oh, man. I'm about to fuck it up. World, ah, World War Shoe. World, oh, that's yeah. clever. I like that. And honestly, that's probably the most clever line or title to a sneaker documentary. And it fits. It fits, you know, because obviously it's about the the rivalry between Puma and Adidas. About the brothers? Yes. Uh, The documentary will recount 
the feud between German brothers Adolf, also known as Adi, and Rudolf, also known as Rudy, Dossler. Uh, the feud led to the creation of two of today's top footwear brands, Adidas and Puma. And now the family rivalry will be documented by someone with close ties. It is also expected to spotlight some of uh, the brand, both brands' most prolific athletes, cover the two brothers' years-long legal battles, and deep dive into the secret details of the lifelong feud, as well as what occurred in the 1936 Olympic Games. Uh, a release date for World War Shoe has yet to be announced. Like, I don't know why. Every time I say World War II, now I'm able to say that clearly. Maybe because I'm anticipating saying shoe after World War. World War. War. World, World War. War Shoe. World, World War, War shoe. shoe. Shit, I got to say it like World super War slow. Shoe. That's that. But no, I, there's a do- I love documentaries. DPS I, education. I love documentaries to death. I, I mean, I can sit there and binge watch documentaries, even if it's things that I don't even think I would enjoy. Like, I saw one about a rock climber. You know, he, like, I, it, but almost, it was interesting. Did he almost die? No, he didn't. Uh, Not I at all. his own arm off to survive. But, okay, first of all, this has nothing to do with sneakers either. What is stick? I, well, stick and dunks. Y'all can answer this. <laughs> what is up? <laughs> I got to ask this question because it's like every time I see this, like anytime you see like extreme sports where motherfuckers got to like ride a bike on the edge of a cliff. You know what I'm saying? Or or uh, uh, parquet, or is it parkour? Parkour, or parkour, parkour, parkour man. Parkour. I do not understand it. Like, I did not survive Detroit to fall off a mountain. That is not how I'm going out. It's parkour a, is the one where I really got a lot of It's adrenaline about. rush. I would do parkour exactly how they did on The Office. I've spent a good part of my life trying to explain why white people do the shit they do, and it's just it's impossible to describe. Dude, we just do stuff. We just do it. Like, you think I'm, you can ride <laughs> that bike down that hill at 45? Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you wake up in a hospital with a neck brace, like, did you film it? Dude, yeah, no, I don't understand. Cause I be, like, I'm watching this documentary. This guy is climbing. Uh, uh, first of all, it's like one of the flattest uh, mountain sides in the country. I don't know where it was at, but... So how was he climbing it? What was he, he was climbing where? it with no ropes. It was just all hands. Have you ever seen a goat go up like a mountain? Yeah, I have seen that. They're yeah. goats, That's though. actually pretty sweet. That's white people. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. But he's climbing up this mountain. And, like, so, you know, he look, I mean, he's looking at a thrill. I would look at that as, like, first of all, I'm scared of heights, so I'm not even climbing a mountain unless I absolutely have to. That's it. Other than that, I'm not... So he... No ropes... Nothing. It's just him, a bag of powder, you know, to keep his hands dry. Uh, I think he was wearing shoes. I'm not sure. But it took him like a couple hours. Like even a, even the guy recording the documentary, he was on the ground. Obviously, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I was. I, <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's sweet when the goats do it because they do it with some. But speed. that ghost, though, you know, like the animals, you know, like to a certain extent, that's stupid. Like, okay, you know, they're they trying to. They may be getting away from a, a wolf or a bear. Bears, I, you know. So, I don't know, man. Just to, to consciously say to myself, I want to climb that with no safety equipment whatsoever. He did it to his credit. He did it. I guess he got a story to tell. Um, but even a guy recording a documentary couldn't even watch it. Like he had the camera uh, set up, I, and he had his back turned the whole time. Yeah, I, I would have been the guy sitting there staring at him from the ground, eating Twinkies or something. Like if you fall, I'll catch you. Did you see the famous magician Blaine? I don't know if it was like a trick or more of a stunt, but he had like balloons with a, <laughs> an actual helicopter thing lifting him up. They do be on some crazy shit. Yeah, white people. I, honestly, like I, I mean, shout out to y'all. It's a little, uh, y'all a little different. Like I seen the video. I seen a video. Of this dude, he's in a. Uh, some type of pond with other crocodiles and of course the crocodile inevitably tries to take a bite of his shoulder and he freaks out and jumps out now what did you think was going to happen when you got into a pond full of crocodiles did you not think that there is a slight chance a slight chance that a crocodile might actually try to bite you well this goes back to why you like shark week yeah thank you i love shark week stick i love shark you know why i love shark week why because every year, white people have to remind us of how dangerous sharks are. As if they haven't spent the last 30 years showing us this shit. And then they get, it's like every year they got to do something more dangerous to, to emphasize the point, right? Like, so this one guy, my favorite <laughs> one, I don't know what year this was. This dude already lost an arm and a leg to a shark. He's a, he's a photographer, underwater photographer. He jumps into the water. He's in a shark cage at first. And apparently his camera doesn't have a zoom button on there because he has to get a better picture of the shark. So he gets out of the shark cage. And at some point, it was a bull shark, which is like one of the more dangerous sharks you could be around. 
So I guess what a bull shark does is that it, it starts to swim real low against the seabed to stir up the mud to disorient to disorientate his uh, prey. The bull shark begins to do this. The guy is narrating and telling us, yeah, this is what they do before they attack. And I'm like, why are you still in the water? <laughs> Hey. You already lost an arm and a leg, bro. This, this is how it feels every weekend when we open up sneakers and enter your <laughs> That's bro. what I'm, I was going to say that. Hey, look, they're brave enough to get into the water with a shark, but Why would you do that? Us, when they see us standing outside in the line for sneakers, no, it's a If I lose a fingernail to a shark, I'm never getting back in the ocean, ever. Hey, if you're finding a shark, you got to gouge its eye out. It's the only shot you stand. Matter of fact, you know how I remember when I was a kid, you know, you'll watch Jaws. And like you'll be like on the couch and fall asleep, my leg would be hanging off the edge of the couch, and I would freak out thinking that like the shark would come by my you know couch, and bite my leg off, as if it was hanging off the edge of a boat. That's how freaked out I am. So I was like, I can't imagine losing two body parts and still being like, yo, man, I'm about to go out here. This this picture about to go on the ground. Bro, I'm sharks are my biggest fear in life. You don't even Thank know. Thank you. I, I don't fuck with sharks. I, I'll, I'll mess with a shark on land though. I'm not scared of a shark if he's on land. In yeah, water, it's a shark. As I say, because he can't move as fast. <laughs> Man, my, my three land. biggest fears are <laughs> sharks, the IRS, and wearing Yeezys. And, and, right. And any police department in the affluent area. Those are <laughs> like my three biggest fears. Well, you better be real nice over here. Uh, every, time I come to, yeah, every time I come to the studio, I'm like, man, let me put my seatbelt on. Let me sit up all right. Let me straighten up my back. Yeah, let me do five below the Let me not level. have my hat on backwards. Let yeah. me take my hoodie off. I got DUI right down there. They're not friendly. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's yeah. A nice Shout out Judge Small. It's a nice Kroger over there, though. Kroger is beautiful. Let me switch from Dr. Pepper to Mr. Pibb. You know what I mean? <laughs> let me white it up. Hold up. Do people actually drink Mr. Pibb? It still sells. Somebody's still selling it somewhere. Stick. <laughs> we're gonna, we're hey, gonna listen, direct. I'll, I'll allow a lot of talk about white people. You start talking <laughs> about Mr. Pibb, we got fucking problems. <laughs> I was going to say, well, burners. Mr. Pibb Surge, like, <laughs> <laughs> like anytime we want to know about white people, we're just going to ask Stick. I still have crystal clear Pepsi at my house, okay? Oh, and, wow. Hey, I can get you some. No oh. problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, we got the plug. Yeah, he's Whoa. like a VP at Pepsi, oh, so. Stop. Now, what do they got coming out? You got something new coming out with Pepsi? Or can you not tell us? Is this top secret? Y'all should start leaking photos like Nike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you guys got limited products, Pe uh, Pepsi Mango is about to come back out in a couple weeks. Hey, like, do like, hey, uh, you heard do it like, here first, Pepsi Mango. Hey, yeah. do like these sneakerheads and start like photoshopping. <laughs> I don't have to. We, Colorways I, of the Pepsi. I, I, I get the photos at the beginning of the year. Like, I know oh, everything that's going to oh. come out this whole year. Hey, I'm going to open a Discord channel. Uh, Pepsi Next. We'll leave everything. They probably going. already have one. I'm about to find out. Yeah, you should yeah. find out. Uh, this next one. <laughs> I wish we had the drop while you always lying. Remember that song? Why you always lying? I forgot about that. I wish that song was playing no, I don't right think now. Ducks know about because it. as I was as I was reading the story, <laughs> that's all I heard in the back of my mind. Uh, Nike CEO says company has been working on anti bot technology. Oh God, this story. They hired a commie a few years ago, and it's, they're paying them three hundred thousand to a million a year. But it's a constant battle that's between their developer and the bot developers. So they push something, we push something, and it's just update versus update. Sometimes they win, sometimes Don't. they. A million dollars to Nike. A million dollars to Nike is pocket money. First I, off, I agree. Well, yeah, because they're, they're, they're fighting sixteen-year-old kids well, who are staying up all night drinking Herbert Red Bull and winning. Making what four bill, four million? Four million. Yeah, they're yeah, paying the million one million guy. Million. Yeah, he's he's, I, he's responsible for the I've technology. Proven, even when Nike has their filters on, I've proven they choose when they turn it on and off. For example, like the limited shoe, they're gonna have it on, but a kid's shoe that's not selling, they're gonna turn it off, and, and you'll bot the shit out of them. From my point of view, they're only doing it so they can say they're doing something. Of course, that's it. And they can't filter every region. Like U.S., Japan, all, all these different countries. So technically, Sneakers you have is to, slightly different region to region. So you'd have to have a different bot filter per region. I don't know about on their end, but different patches but have they to do be made the, oh, on the bot Because there's a, I mean, because the sneakers app already works like that anyway. Like, we don't get, like, there's a sneakers Europe. There's a sneakers right. Asia. Like, and some things are desktop only or, like, non-sneaker launches. But my point you know? is, if something drops on sneakers Asia, it doesn't show up on my sneakers app. So Correct. they already break it up or section it off based on region anyway. So just have the developers in that region use whatever, you know, works. Like Sneakers Canada, they get barely anything. Everyone I know What's in Canada, Canada it stands no chance pretty much. Wait, there is a Sneakers Canada? Yes. Why? I was going to say, does it not ever snow well, Canada in Canada? Canada does exist, whether we like them or not. I mean, like, I honestly, like, even in I the like summertime, Canada. I like Toronto. So even in the summertime, I feel like you can go down Shout on the Riverwalk and watch it snow in Canada. Like it, it's... 
it, it forever seems like it's just forever ice over there. I've. N- I love Toronto though. Yeah, Toronto's great. But every time I've went, it's been cold. So I've gone when it's warm. I have. It's really nice when it's warm. And it's not on our purpose. Like every time, like for whatever reason, subconsciously we schedule all our trips in these latter half of the year. Oh, we should go to Toronto. I'm we should. Down. They're yeah. not letting us over though. Oh yeah, that is right. Forgot. Yeah, y'all That's got right. COVID, and y'all trying to overthrow y'all government? Nah, we good. <laughs> y'all, stay- <laughs> 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 y'all stay over there. Uh, but anyway, Nike CEO says company has been working on anti-bot technology. An article written by Jello Gonzalez for Rappler.com. In an internal meeting, Nike CEO John Donahoe uh, said that the company had been working on anti-bot technology for the last several years. Bullshit. I, I, where? I ain't seen it. Uh, okay. John also acknowledged that they needed to double down on those efforts. No shit. Referring to problems being created by the sneaker resale business. Uh, the eternal meeting was reportedly held this past Monday, weeks after a story broke by Bloomberg detailing the son of Ann Herbert had used her credit card to fund this sneaker resale business. This next part is about to have me pissed off. You Heidi, already are. No, nah, bro, trust me. This is about to just, I'm about to just lose my shit. Heidi O'Neill, Nike's president of Consumer and Marketplace, also spoke in a meeting talking about Ann and that whole situation, right? This is what she said. She said that Ann had demonstrated poor judgment. Okay. Here's my problem. She fucking told you about it. So if Ann demonstrated poor judgment, what then did Nike do? Nothing. If you knew about it. They did nothing. If you <laughs> knew about her son's resale business and her proximity to it, and now you want to say, oh, well, that's a demonstration of poor judgment. You had that information, too. Well, here's my problem with that, with that statement of her gener- demonstrating poor judgment. Because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I know it's going to come up within that article, is that they still found that she did nothing wrong. Yeah. So then where's the poor what, judgment? What is, what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like she did nothing wrong. So either she demonstrated poor judgment. It's a conflict of interest. It but in terms of laws is. being broken right, because of the product. I well, wish they would say that, though. They yeah. keep trying to couch it. Because that, that's, to... that's what I'm saying. Because oh. what I said before, I think I said in our group chat, would be, they keep saying she did nothing wrong, but you fired her. But uh, so, I'm, I'm also going to help Nike here. The best thing you can do to stop bots is just resetting accounts because every Nike account you have is it attached to a unique phone number, right? Yes. And every now and then you see it's like, oh, you got to reset your password. They, yes. they used to mass reset once or twice a year. Now they're doing it every few months just so if you don't have access to that phone number, you can't reset it. Most people are using SIM cards because we don't have thousands of phone numbers. Right. You know what I mean? So if Nike keeps resetting all these accounts and you don't have access to that email, you can't reset it. And there's another thing too about mm. the sneakers app: the more you the more you score on there, the better your odds are going forward. And the more you take L's, the less your chances are going forward. Any anything yeah, you, you can you do to show that. anything I know, but that's you can show to like be human engagement, like watch the videos, click like, click a heart. If that's true in their algorithm, it'll it'll appear that you're not a bot, and you will have higher odds. If you pay with PayPal or or uh. uh whatever the fucking uh, Apple Pay, um, significantly higher charges because they're blocking credit cards. If they see a credit card and an address linked more than once, it might get filtered or red flagged. You know what I'm saying? I can't If tell. you use Apple Pay or um, PayPal, significantly better odds, and it'll go through faster. Hmm. You're welcome. I feel like this, this is, is where, why, like, the more you know I'm cloud, she just, like, go across the screen right now. Uh, this, is, this is why we have European Caesar. Yes, thank you, European Caesar. You're welcome, guys. Slam. Dunk. There we go. <laughs> uh, while Ann disclosed her son's business back in 2018, Nike said that she hadn't been able to update the company about her son's business growth. Why does that matter? Why does it matter how much it grew? You shouldn't be doing it. That's like me saying, well, you know, yeah, they robbed the bank, but they didn't take that much. You robbed the bank. It's, it's irrelevant how much you were able to get away with. No, her son robbed a bank. She just happened to work there and knew, like, the code to get in. Well, she just so happened to buy the getaway car. Listen, the point is, you knew what was going on. Why does it matter how much the company is growing or not growing? It's still a conflict of interest. It doesn't matter if he's making a million dollars or $200. You should not be re- reselling shoes with your mother's credit card, who happens to be the VP of your brand. Just, it's a conflict of interest. Like, sitting there trying to split hairs about how much money they were making, how big the business grew or didn't grow, all that is irrelevant. Well, they're trying to do their window dressing now. You know what I'm saying? This is red herring for people to get distracted with. Does not matter how much the company grew. You knew it was going down. 
you knew that it was her son. Even in, I, I, we're gonna get to another story because I, I do want to go more in detail about it. Um, well, I, guess, I was gonna say the interesting thing about everything though is you you really do get the sense of really and did do nothing wrong in the sense of she told them right oh what this, was going on this next part is telling because there's this, a this, lot of frustrations in sneakers and everyone always wants to blame someone and it looks bad for her but like legally did she do anything wrong no but was there a conflict of interest yeah does it look bad absolutely yes right. most definitely and you're right like he's not the only person doing it but he's the face of it now you know what i'm saying well uh, and him and marcus jordan yeah well he's not the face of it marcus all, jordan can get away because marcus jordan is gonna sit in his mansion or his daddy's mansion i don't want to say his mansion as if he earned anything well, but yes son, he can sit always covered up yeah he can go never sit, seen it he can go sit well That's first of all thing. rule of thumb for anybody listening if you are posting pictures of you doing some type of thing where, or activity that you feel the need to blur your face out, one, don't do interviews with Bloomberg Business Week. <laughs> two, don't show them <laughs> credit card statements or bank statements with your mother's name on it. Because already what you're telling me is you blurring out your face. That means you do not want... Your face, you don't want your your, your you know uh, identity known. You want some anonymity, and to some level, you know what you're doing has some type of gray area enough to where you don't want to be identified. So why are you doing interviews, and then why are you showing people bank statements, idiot? But this next part is telling in the story because uh, it talks about okay, so she had been able to update the company about her son's business growth or whether it had been following Nike policies on reselling and family and employee relationships. That, that feeds into the next story that I'm going to get into. Uh, anyway, John Donahoe said that they plan to update the, its policies surrounding the matter. Once again, that's telling because anybody that knows anything, they had a policy, they changed it, and now they're talking about going back to the earlier policy. Why they changed it, I don't know, but it just seems a little suspicious. Anyway, going back to Ann Herbert and her son, did former Nike VP Ann Herbert get a pass on her son's resale business. I think most of us would agree, yes. Yeah, I think sure. most definitely she got a pass. I think uh, I think both her and Nike do not want people to deep dive into this any further than they have, and I think they wish that this would just go away. But, like I've been saying to people I've been talking to at Nike, this has been a long time coming. This isn't something that just, people aren't, it's been a slow build up to this point, and people are frustrated. You're not going to just blow this isn't going to just blow over like people have been having attitudes about their ability to get per, certain pairs of shoes uh their uh ability to access certain products on the sneakers app uh and i will even venture to say that nike has been for the longest time taking their fan base for granted um you guys and you know now you that's usually what happens when you're the number one brand uh when you're number one at anything sometimes you think your shit don't stink, right? Here's another thing. Hold I on, know let me finish this thought real quick because I'm going to forget it. Sometimes you think your shit don't stink. You smell your own farts. The problem with that is is that you start to lose your own sense of smell to the point where you can't even tell when you shit the bed no more. And this is an example of Nike shit in the bed and not knowing it. They're oblivious to it because they're the number one brand. They're the number one brand, right? So they don't think they have to listen to anybody. You know, like, I mean, I've actually had people say, what are you going to do, buy Adidas? Like, I've actually people say that shit. Because they know, they know they're the shit. They know they have the products people want. Can you not use that analogy next time? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, that was, <laughs> that was, was weird. No, it wasn't. It was great. <laughs> you just mad you didn't use it. Look, point no, is, kind of disgusting. if I'm Nike, y'all got a long road ahead of y'all as far as repairing that relationship between you and the sneaker community. And I hope y'all take that shit seriously. And I hope you don't take that shit for granted because if history has told us anything, it doesn't matter if it's a country or a company. You are not too big to fail. We've seen Rome fall. We've seen Macy's go for uh, 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 fucking go bankrupt. it has been a lot of shit. It's been a lot of shit. Do not get the do not get it in your head. Let's remember, Converse at one time was the biggest brand as far as sneakers. Then Adidas. Then Reebok. Why Nike thinks that they are just immune to that, I do not know. But do not make the mistake that you're going to be number one forever, and people are just going to keep tolerating your shit because at some point people are going to get jaded enough to where. They might not even want your product. They might just get out of sneakers altogether. So go ahead, Dunks. It's been proven Nike employees are, are on Discord or using software or Nike bots. Whether they're doing it for their own purposes or sharing it with Nike, it makes no sense why they have access to the software and they can't combat it. Why can't they put up hundreds of million dollars against these children, coder prodigies? 
They, uh, why can't they re- reverse engineer it? I don't know. They can. Oh, and, and and they should make it public if they want to wage a war on bots. At this point, that's pretty much what you got to do: reverse engineer them. No, you, I agree. You got want- Ghost out there. You got DNA. You got Viper, um, BNB, TSB. Um, I've seen you guys in TSB. So <laughs> just putting it all out there. You want to name names? Yeah, and, and it's funny. Back to all your analogies. The number one Nike bot right now is called the shit bot. It's just a lot of shit talk. No, I, I, I don't. I don't. You don't, you don't like it. shit. I know. Nor do I. I mean, who likes shit? <clears throat> hey, but when it's a Nike draw, though, they do have time to filter slightly better than when it's like a first come, first serve. I will say that. Well, here's the other part of it, and we we've always gone through this whenever we go to the beginning of the year and we talk about the top uh, sneaker releases for the the previous year, and usually it's a shoe or like three or four Nike shoes on there that something that we wouldn't even go for it's like the common shoe so it's the shoe that costs like 40 50 bucks I, that's what nike's audience is geared that's what they're gearing towards like we are just this small minority of individuals who just happen to like certain products they don't care about you know us being able to score what we want to score because that product everything that's sitting on the site well probably not that one but Everything that's hype is going to sell out regardless, no matter what. But it's the little stuff. It's the Air Max Revolutions or or stuff like that. That's what they want to sell. That's what they want to push. That's the audience and the market that they're going to go for. Not us three looking for whatever the next release is on sneakers. They know they're going to make their money off of that. But it's making money off all of the other stuff. Well, and they can force the retailers to peddle the shit stuff. Like, exactly. all right, you got to move all, you got to move three and shelves they, of this if you want to get two of these. And they all do it. Every single brand does that. Nike is the best at doing it because they have the product that everybody and wants. And then, hey, these shoes you're saying that, like, people don't care about as much that aren't selling out. And you wonder why are they below retail and stock X? Because the retailers are selling them. Because they're paying MSRP and they know they can get away with exactly. it. And the regular customer doesn't want it anymore. Because <laughs> resellers ruined everything. Put y'all up on game. I gotta say this too. I'm Shout gonna get so much hate for this episode from everyone. Well, we hate you, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah should, you should be. I hate used me. to that by now. Yeah. But no, real quick, shout out to Hunger Lisa. She put me up. Okay, so remember that documentary I was telling y'all earlier about about the, about the white the dude climbing? climbing? Yeah, it's called Free Solo. Uh, if anybody's interested, if you want to see a white guy climb a mountain, it's called Free Solo. Yeah, you can go to uh, Lifetime. They got rock climbing. There. <laughs> <laughs> like, you right, can you just see go in there. You want. Don't like. even work out. Just watch people <laughs> climb. Rock climb. Uh, anyway, an article written by Edgar Alvarez for Input I, Mag. I swear I thought she was going to say Edgar Allan Poe. I was just, I, what? My bad. I was hoping He's not for still it. writing articles. Ridiculous. He might. And not about sneakers. Uh, the very first time in the terms of, or the very first line in the terms of service for Swoosh. Quote the Raven. <laughs> Nevermore. The online store reserved for Nike employees where they can buy products up to 40% off reads. Um, pay attention. Items purchased on Swoosh may not be resold either directly or indirectly Uh-oh. in any manner by any Swoosh user. Yeah, no, everybody knows that. This includes reselling Nike merchandise through internet auction sites, flea markets, garage sales, or any other type of personal business transaction. From the get-go, Nike make it, makes it clear that it doesn't want its workers to resell its products. This also applies to family of employees registered to use the swoosh benefits who are only allowed to purchase items for themselves or as a gift for others. Mm-hmm. And yet, when former VP Ann Herbert disclosed to the brand that her teenage son Joe was running a sneaker resale business, Nike didn't seem to have a problem with it. That happened in 2018, the same year that LOC, West Coast Streetwear, was established by Pascal Herbert, Ann's husband, and Joe's father. Then on July 30th, 2019, the LOC's registration was transferred over to Joe, who the year before was underage, and by Oregon law, couldn't legally register the company in his name. Uh, The day prior to that, July 29th, 2019, Joe seemed to celebrate with a photo on Instagram that captioned, just the start, which showed him posing in front of dozens of stacks of shoe boxes like Nike's and their Jordans. A spokeswoman, or spokesperson, I'm sorry, uh, for Nike told Bloomberg Businessweek that there was no violation of company policy, privileged information, or conflict of interest. I just read the policy. We then just told you what Joe, I mean, and Ann did, or at least what Joe did, Ann is, you know, even indirectly. And now you you still going to fix your mouth to say there's no conflict. Come on, bro. This is why people are mad at y'all. Because the lie is always worse than the cover. The cover-up is always worse than the crime. 
You know what I'm saying? If you're going to, it's one thing to be to see what happened or to hear what happened, but then to hear you continue to act like, oh, there's nothing wrong, nothing to see here. It's infuriating, man. Like seriously, as fans of your brand, as fans of your product, you were really, really, really pissing us off. I just want y'all to know that. Anybody from Nike watching this, y'all are really, really pissing us off right now. Um, let me go back to it. Nor is there any commercial affiliation between West Coast Streetwear and Nike, including the direct buying or selling of Nike products. That statement came despite reports that the American Express corporate card for West Coast Streetwear uh, was under Ann Herbert's name, a fact that Bloomberg Businessweek found out by accident after her son Joe wanted to show a credit card statement proving how much revenue his company was making. Even if Ann wasn't the one physically buying the sneakers Joe was reselling, this still ties her directly to the operation he was running. Once again, going back to the Nike statement, directly or indirectly. Fuck. And when you look at Nike's internal code of ethics, some former employees say it's difficult to understand how the company didn't see any red flags in Ann's ties to her son's business. And the Nike code of ethics uh, that was in place in 2018, when she told them, which employees refer to internally as keep it tight, a play on the brand's just do it slogan, there's the stern indication that employees must not be involved in any secondary business that may lead to any sort of personal gain, and that extends to family. And once again, we know that Joe was using his mother's discount to go into company stores and the employee store to buy and sell products. So once again, boy. However, Nike's updated version of his code of conduct does add a key line. Potential conflicts can often be resolved with an open and honest discussion. Remember, having a conflict of interest is not necessarily a violation of our code, but failing to disclose it is. Well, that would be in her defense. Exactly. That would be in her defense. Still, it's, it, 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 once, now, again, those, once again, we, those two lines, well, that line versus the rest of the code or the code of ethics, once again, that seems like a conflict of interest. Like, yo, like, how, it's almost like you're saying two different things. Like, don't do this, but if you're going to do it, let us know. It's like, don't rob banks, but, you know, if you're going to so rob banks, like at least give me a heads up. the Constitution, but I'm curious as to when that was added, if it was before or after she disclosed it. Man, oh, I, that's a good but question. They're right? going to bury it anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. This code of ethics, what I, the line I just read came after she told them. So that's probably why. So, yeah, so it's like, okay, well, There's based like on our new set of ethics, yourself. we can't really... It's still, like, it's still too much. It, the waters are too muddy. Um, where am I at? Can't see the sharks in muddy waters. Exactly. <laughs> While Ann did disclose her son's business to Nike, it is still unclear to how many to many how the brand came to the conclusion that it was acceptable for someone in her position to have any sort of involvement, directly or indirectly, in a company whose primary goal was reselling Nike products at a market price. Aside from Ann owing, owning some part of the West Coast Streetwear's banking, there hasn't been any other proof that she herself was benefiting directly from her son's business. Uh, but Joe made it abundantly clear that his connections in the sneaker industry were crucial. What connections would he possibly have? It's only one connection. No, honestly. And that it played a major role in helping him achieve success. According to Bloomberg Businessweek, Joe insisted that his mom was so high up at Nike as to be removed from what he does and that he never received inside information such as discount codes from her. That's not necessarily true because, however, Joe's digital footprint seems to tell another story as he would often post pictures on Instagram where he could be seen carrying dozens of Nike shoes and bags from Nike stores. Once again, this clout generation pretty much incriminates themselves because he not only is he doing the shit that he said he didn't do, but he's posting it on Instagram. He has pictures of drones from above, so you can see it's not dozens; it's almost hundreds of boxes at times. Yeah, right. say, it's, it's a warehouse. That's what I'm saying. It's like, no, nah, and you stumble across some mags. <clears throat> I right, bullshit. This is what I'm talking about. Half the stuff that he's getting caught up in is the shit he posted, the shit that he told on himself about. You idiot. Uh, the same stores where Nike employees and family members who are on guest lists can get discounted items. I'm just going to look at the camera, bro. I'm just going to look at the camera. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah, I was just, yeah go, zoom in. There we go. Look at, look at the camera. See? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> 
It's also telling that shortly after it was discovered that he was related to Ann, Joe cut off all communication with Bloomberg Businessweek. Why would you do that if you ain't do nothing guilty or do nothing wrong? Uh, many former Nike employees said it was common knowledge that at the brand that employees aren't allowed to use the discount to resell product and that any sort of reselling from an employee could lead to potential HR violations. They also echo the other employees at Nike have been fired for way less way less but they weren't surprised as higher ups at nike tend to play by different rules there are additional lingering questions for nike like and i want people to answer these questions if the brand did indeed let people go in lower roles for less serious less serious offenses why did Ann receive special privileges and exceptions the next question why was she allowed to continue in her role or at the very least told that her son's operation went against their code of ethics Last question, and if, as Nike claims, there were no conflicts of interest or violations, why did she suddenly depart from the company after West Coast Streetwear was unexpectedly put under a microscope? Because once again, she ain't doing nothing wrong, right? So why you resign? I, I just asked those three questions for me. Somebody get back to me. Well, I got one question that I want to ask about that as well. Go ahead. Would be, all right, God damn it, and I forgot what the question was going to be. You got five minutes. Go Luckily, ahead. we're live, Gino. Yeah, exactly, right? You got five but minutes. <laughs> No, seriously, you got five minutes. But, but but no, like like I said before, no, I know what the question was. He cut off all communication to Bloomberg when it was found out who Ann was, right? Yeah. After he provided the, the information <laughs> to let them know who Ann was. I'm under the impression he requested funny. the interview and did like a tell all. It was like a flex. Yeah, that's, that's but that's the, that's, that's what that's happens when you try to flex. Hey, that yeah. should be the segment when flexing goes wrong for white people. No, that's when flexing goes wrong for anybody. That, like, that mostly black, white people. Yeah, yeah mostly yeah. white people. I was like, you're just gonna leave me out there with Here's that. The, the, the black people do it too. They put the you know the, the sneaker stories when they rob somebody and then they post on yes. the, on Instagram. So, but we put them in this week in stupid because it's stupid. I mean, it should be this year in stupid. Yeah, this story. Honestly, this this has to be yeah white the, collar stupid. Very stupid. I like that. We you didn't want them to know who your mother segments. was. That's a double you, entendre. You didn't want them to know who your mother was, but you had a piece of paper with her information on it. I mean, well, like you, I said, you, put, you post pictures of yourself with your face blurred out, but you're doing interviews with a prominent paper or, or, or uh, outlet. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. Did he do the interview? Did he have the, like the, the voice change machine? So imagine Nino Brown. <laughs> imagine Nino Brown being like, "All right, I'm gonna sit down and do this interview." And then I want you to know how much how much money I'm selling by uh, dealing drugs. Like no, like you got to be smart if you're gonna do that type of business. Don't put yourself out there. No, I mean he, work in the shadows, stay in the shadows. It's when you come out in the sunlight that's he when wanted, you get caught he, up. He wanted to be seen. That's the problem. And I, I he wanted that you, clout. And I bet you his friends were probably some of the ones that were like, "Hey, bro, like you know, you you really the goat. You out here doing it. You need to let people know who you are." Well, and he got gassed up, and he cost. What's uh, that Thanos mean? It was like all that for a drop of clout. Yeah, yeah. Is, just yeah. like that. He thought yeah. he was inevitable and he tried to snap. Just like that. Happen. And all of a sudden, <laughs> your mother's 25 year career, $4.4 million a year, stock options goes up into a cloud of dust like a Thanos snap. I still want to know about her stock options or, or where she stands. She might that. still have it. I don't know. Because it seemed I, like I, she's that's another Nike. question, Nike, number four. Yeah, I want, no. yeah number four. I want to know. Nike. Nike's gonna they're gonna take care they're of it. They're gonna yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling. I have a That's why I said suspicion. whether whether they cut off her stock options or they gave her a nice package, maybe they uh cause she had twenty five years in, so you know, maybe she was able to keep whatever her retirement was. Yeah. So Hey Stick, were you able to did I send you that video for the end? Uh no. Huh. All right. All right, We're on still that note. organized <laughs> as usual. <laughs> the beauties of, of being Hold wild. on, maybe you did, maybe you did. Did you send it this morning? I thought I said it was in the queue again. I don't know what's going on in my emails. He, is it the, he doesn't, he is doesn't it the jump man basket, that one? Yeah. All right, let me download it. He, he doesn't have an iPhone. It's That's a blank problem. email, bro. See? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, get you an iPhone. It literally just has a subject on it. Wow. Just, just give me a promo. I'll be here drinking coffee, make sure everything's queued up, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got the I graphic, just... though. There you go. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're going to figure this out. Oh, well. Anyway, um, that whole situation, man, it, it's 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 bad. It's real fishy. There's a lot more to it. Nike's gonna try and cover up as much as they can and sweep it under the rug. They ain't got no choice to. I mean, if I'm if I'm Nike, I don't want this going any further than <laughs> Gorilla Glue. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. 
put the permit permanent. Yeah. So, on that note. Um, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, you know what Jumpman Boxing's word of the week is? Nah, man. Like, this is the second week. Now he's going to be mad at me. Oh, Woodward. Man. That's what it is. Because shout out to Woodward Sports. Yeah, shout out to Woodward Sports. That's We're going to have it together <laughs> next week. Uh, but no, definitely. But once again, but we do want to shout out Jumpman Boxing because he is uh, one of the founding fathers of the show, if you want to call him that. And uh, so sorry, JB, if you're watching this. That's my fault. I, whatever my email is, is doing something you're weird. You're probably about to get a text right I think now. Nike put a bottom on I'm going to get blamed Did he this. post it on Twitter or something? I can f- try to find it real quick. He's always posting something on Twitter. All right, I'm looking at Oh, He's it's just Dunks posting Instagram fault. links, though. We're just, yeah, we're just blaming Dunks for it. I'm sorry, John. European season. Yeah, damn it, Dunks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I definitely want to shout out Jetman Bostick, man. Like, you know, he's not able to be here. But uh, he's here in spirit. Man, he will be. He I wonder how he feels so. about this. I really want to talk. He to wants him. to time it when I can't make it. He'll pull up. Oh, you gonna pull up in the airship? Is, my, is that my phone? Yeah, that's you. Oh, okay. He's no, he away. gonna. He gonna. That's him texting you right now. Like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, you can't find it. Okay. Anyway, shout the jump man, Bostick. I promise you, next week we're gonna have his word because uh, you know I yeah, like. Yeah, see, be on time end. next week. Jesus. Remind me, oh, stick. Who was the last person here? Whoa. Hey, all that matter, who was the first person here? Uh, it went Dunks first, Caesar second, Gino last, me well before all y'all prepping this whole damn <laughs> show. Because you live here, that's why. <laughs> but on that note, this is a Sneaker Box, po- uh, sneaker box Morning Show. Morning What's Show. It's no, Sneaker yeah. Box Morning, morning Show. Morning Show, damn. Right here on Wilbur Sports Network. We'll see you guys next Saturday. We out. Peace.